City of Adelaide Council meeting on Thursday the 28th of January 2021. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Blight in determining the sites for this, sorry, the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning history. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you, members. Please be seated. Okay. Um, members, uh, that takes us to item five on the agenda tonight, which is apologies and leaves of absence. I haven't received any apologies, so I do note that I have got two council members not in attendance at this point. Um, hopefully they'll join us shortly. Item six on the agenda is confirmation, uh, confirmation of minutes from the 15th of December 2020, the 23rd of December 2020 and the 30th of December 2020. I ask for someone to move. Those minutes. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. And a second, thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, any comments? If not, to the move to sum up. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, the, no, item number seven on tonight's agenda is deputations, and there were no deputations granted at the time of the agenda being published. Uh, Similarly, with item eight on the agenda, which petitions we have no petitions this evening. That takes us to item nine. Nine point one is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority special meeting from the twenty seventh, twenty seventh of January, twenty twenty, uh, regarding the Tennis SA Centre Court development stage number two. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Today, Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Okay. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you. Members? Not to the mover to summer. Sunday. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to item number 10 uh, on tonight's agenda. Uh, we have two reports. 10.1 is the Wave Land Management Agreement. Um, and I'll look for a mover. Well, Mayor, I'd just like to declare an actual conflict of interest as I'm a member of the Council Assessment Panel. Thank you, so Councillor. I'll be removing myself from the Chamber until uh, it's done. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, members, I'll look for a mover. Councillor Knoll and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Yes. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Members. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, um, 
I won't be agreeing to this, and I do hope that there's some chance of persuading elected members not to accept it. Uh, land management agreements are what this council enters into when it wants to provide certainty. When it wants to provide certainty to developers, purchasers, uh, purchasers and neighbours about the way in which a property will be developed. It provides the market and it provides people with certainty. And LMA says you can buy a property knowing when you do so, your view won't be built out, there won't be something inappropriate constructed next to you that you do not know about. That's what a land management agreement is. This one has been changed many, many times, as is noted here, for properties on Finna Street to accommodate a particular design. But this change, uh, the change here before us, as the administration advises, was never, ever contemplated. Uh, it was never contemplated because it requires the demolition of a once heritage listed property which has been compromised by modifications, no questions about that, has been compromised, but which could have been incorporated into something that the uh, developer proposed. Um, it is not, and uh, I have it from uh, ratepayers, uh, two in particular, that they are displeased about uh, this, this building of some antiquity being removed. Um, it is yet another example, in their view, of how uh, in the city of Adelaide, uh, street by street, house by house, brick by brick, parts of our heritage are being removed. Now, uh, I know that uh, most members uh, will agree to this. There is a, a view, I'm sure, that a land management agreement uh, can be just amended, let's knock over this place, get it out of the way and get on with it. But I say to all of you, um, you are denting public confidence in land management agreements. Uh, you're sending a signal, they're not worth the paper they're written on at the City of Adelaide, they can be changed. Uh, and the people that many of you have promised to help in a major development in this city who've appealed for our assistance in upholding a land management agreement will look at this. All those people down at West Frankton will look at this and say, look at the city of Adelaide and what they do with land management agreements. It will give them no comfort. Uh, and I ask you all to seriously consider whether this is really the way you want this city to be regarded. So members, are there any questions or would it, are there any other speakers? If not, I will go to the move of the summer. Councillor Knoll. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Carer and Councillor Hyde. Members, that takes us to 10.2 on tonight's agenda, which is the community land revocation for James Place public sorry, toilets. Um, sorry, 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 I think Councillor Martin is confused. He didn't realise that he actually won that vote and the recommendation was lost. Is that correct? Oh, I misunderstood the Lord Bear, so that, that matter was lost. I had to double take as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you have to actually be accountable for the things you voted against. Crazy, Crazy world, so isn't it? So. Crazy world. <laughs> I can't wait for the proponent to get their hands on it when voted against them. Sorry if that was confusing. I, I, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> oh, yes. The right um, answer. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Members, we are going to 10.2, which is the community land location uh, on James Place toilets. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kerra, and a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Kerra, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Moran. I won't vote for this. Um, 
there is no certainty. I've been on the council long enough to know that any agreements with the developer on a new development, such as affordable housing, public toilets, can easily be deleted through financial necessity when it, um, it comes to actually building them. Uh, because they don't make any money out of public toilets, so there's no reason for them to actually stick to that agreement once they've bought the land. Our, this is a core issue. We supply public toilets, and um, they, they are very, very hard to find in the uh, city now that are open late and in, in the streets. Um, in fact, that's the only one I can think of. Um, the Southern Cross has some public toilets, but that, clo that closes at the end of business. Um, so I would say that we shouldn't sell the toilets, we should keep the toilets. Uh, the developer, in my opinion, has no incentive to actually stick to the agreement. Uh, and I don't think I would if I was him. It's not his job to supply public toilets, it's our job. So um, I realise that the numbers aren't here um, to stop the sale of the public toilets, but really cast your mind back. The shops are closed. Unless you enter a restaurant or a hotel and use their toilet facilities, there are no other public toilets. I can assure you I've, I've dipped into a few restaurants on the way home because um, I've gone too far past the public toilets. But they're the only ones and we must value them and we must keep them because that should not be the job of David Jones, uh, Jamie Oliver's to have members of the public using their toilets. That's our job. It is a core business of us to supply public toilets. I don't think it will reduce our uh, sale price too much if we keep that, and I'm sure the developer will quite understand. I'm sure he doesn't want to build public toilets. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I also have um, some concerns around this. Councillor Moran is right um, in that the City Cross is the only public toilet um, in that area, other than the one that we're talking about on James Place, but we know that that's not open after business hours. Um, and anybody that has been out in the city um, late in the evening will know how difficult it is to find a public toilet. Um, there's lots of people who are sleeping rough who would rely on being able to access uh, those facilities. I also note that it's one of the um, few toilets in the city that is um, an accessible toilet and it's a truly open uh, toilet in that sense. Um, and so yeah, I have concerns about how we might ensure that uh, the same level of service is going to be made available to the community by a private developer. I don't think we can rely on a, a private developer to, you know, excuse the pun, but spend a penny on something like that. We have to ourselves, I think, retain some control um, over it. And um, so I, I do think um, for us to lose control of the only public amenity that is in that area, I think would be a mistake. Um, members, I might just ask a couple of questions of administration. Um, just in terms of toilet facility provision uh, in the interim time, if those toilets are closed. See you. I can see you. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, the developer has indicated that temporary toilets will be achieved and established to service during the interim period. Coming back to the, the permanent toilets and whatever, the toilets are strictly under agreement and will be under agreement, covered by an LMA to actually protect the toilets in the future. And it will be consistent in regards to the opening hours, also consistent with the home zone, which extends the opening hours during the weekend. The standard of the toilets also will be uh, above the current standard. It's actually will be maintained to what's classified as a almost a supermarket or a, a shopping centre level. So it's a high level of maintenance and ongoing capital to be continued by the developer themselves. So all, all the operational hours will be maintained. Temporary toilets will be arranged, um, and they've got the full cost for the maintenance and the, the current control. And have we looked at also the? Um, I think it was the closing hours. Council seems that you're referring to just the, what the closing hours might be of the temporary facility and when the new facility is built. 
through you, Lord. Now, the, the opening hours will be, again, of the temporary facilities consistent with the current opening hours, so uh, there's no change to that. And the temporary facility, what they're indicating is once they start uh, demolition, they can actually relocate a temporary toilet in, back into the site uh, within a, a short period. However, they're looking for another temporary location. The permanent site will be consistent, as I indicated, with the current opening hours, but also respectful of the home zone hours through Friday through to Sunday. So effectively, the toilets will stay open the whole way through from Friday evening through to Sunday. And my last question, just in terms of the changing places that was referred to, that is incorporated in the new, uh, in our agreement with them? Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, changing places, accessible toilets, male and female toilets will all be provided. Uh, council has the say in regards to that design, and as a minimum, it will be alike, but the, the intention is to actually uh, lift the standard. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hyde, did you have some questions? Thank you. Members, Councillor Mackey, and then Councillor Martin. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, through you, a, a question to our administration. Is there precedent, I wonder, for public toilets operated under lease by the City of Adelaide, but in private, uh, on private property? CEO, acting CEO. I think there is, but I would need to just clarify with Tom, particularly in parkland spaces where there's, you know, community buildings or um, other buildings where toilets are um, certainly open to the public. Uh, Tom, can you just clarify, please? Through you, Lord Mayor, and in response to the acting CEO, uh, you would have examples uh, indeed within the parkland SACA where people are using public toilets which are actually being operated by other uh, facilities, uh, but none uh, in regards to the CBD. Um, but again, this would be very contractually tight in regards to the obligations, so it will be open to the public at, at all times during the operational hours. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. A follow up question through you. Are there other ways that, because I, I, I understand and I, I hear Councillor Moran's concern about the, the potential for an LMA, LMA to be waived uh, in years to come. Are there ways that we can further contract, through contract, oblige um, uh, in a very binding legal way the, the operation? Um, and the, uh, the related question is, um, it, would there be necessarily anything to prevent, uh, in addition to the LMA, uh, council entering into a lease to operate the public toilets in a long-term way, in the way that we operate other public toilets? Acting CEO. Through the presiding member, um, we can certainly take that on notice and see if there's ways to strengthen the existing um, contract that um, Mr McCready has negotiated with the developer. Uh, Tom, did you wish to comment? Through you, Lord Mayor, and thank you, Acting CEO. For, first of all, the, any contract will be registered on the title. So, uh, notwithstanding being on the title, should the developer or the owner of that property even sell on, it's registered on the title. So, there's an obligation in perpetuity to actually maintain the agreement, unless the parties both come to an agreement uh, contractually to actually part ways. Um, in regards to the service level, uh, uh, in regards to management, the developers indicated that, as I uh, stressed uh, earlier, is that they will maintain and also uh, expand capital on that asset. So there's actually no drawdown of council's funds whatsoever. Okay. Uh, so I have Councillor Martin next, and I'll come back to you, Councillor Sims. Um, yes, let me look. Uh, this hasn't, uh, as I understand it, been committee, not publicly anyway. And so I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Um, what was the year in which these toilets were renovated uh, to include uh, changing places? And what was the cost to council of those uh, upgraded facilities? Uh, through the presiding member, I think it was around 2017 um, that those were, but Tom can confirm that shortly in terms of the cost. Um, we did receive a grant um, at the time uh, from uh, Minister for Social Services to help um, support the cost of the changing places. There was a statewide program around changing places. 
at the time. Um, Tom, did you want to just confirm the year, please? Through you, Lord Mayor, and again through the acting CEO, uh, the cost for the replacement toilets is 450,000 to 100,000 came from the state government. The state government are aware of this, and the, the, the only concerns that the state government had was that the changing places toilets would be reinstated as part of the redevelopment and accessible to all, and they, that has been made clear to them. And has the expenditure incurred by the ratepayers for the upgraded facilities been incorporated into the purchase price? Thank you. Too many microphones on. Tom? Through you, Lord Mayor, it indeed has. Um, we've taken into account the costs that have been borne by Council and also recognised the State Government. And what we've also done is we factored in our rights, which is the uh, what's being built above. Um, so effectively, we're recovering all our costs and we're recovering the value of the asset. And can the administration tell us what is the amount of money council will receive for the sale of this asset? Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Acting CEO. Thank you. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, I would have to take that in confidence because it is part of a report that's been presented to Council and Council actually endorsed the sale of the assets subject to the revocation of the, the community land management. So uh, certainly I can come back to you, but it was reported to Council. Okay, and uh, one more uh, question, Lord Mayor of the Administration. Can they provide an assurance uh, that the changing places facility for the disabled will be part of the temporary facilities provided during the lengthy construction period. I can see it. Um, I'm aware of um, new design when it comes to uh, public toilets and making sure that, um, particularly for events and temporary toilet structures, that there is access fully accessible toilets, but I'm not sure if that's what Tom has negotiated. So, Tom, can you please confirm? Through Lord Mayor, in response to the councillor's questions, in regards to temporary toilets, changing places it may not be able to be achieved, but accessible toilets, male and female toilets, can be achieved on a temporary basis, but certainly on the permanent basis, all of the requirements will be met and built to standard. So may I ask of the administration, what is the period of time during which the changing places facility will not be available? Uh, we know what the construction period is, I'm assuming. Um, could I have that answer? Yes, you may. See. Um, I'm not aware. So Tom, are you able to confirm, please, for Councillor Martin? Thank you. Through you, presiding member. Uh, first of all, in regards to the length of time, that's still to be finalised, subject to approvals given through the process of SCAP, as you're aware, Councillor. One of the things that was actually pending with that development was the Heritage Sands MacDougall, which has now been signed off. Um, we can certainly come back and give an undertaking to respond to you very quickly in regards to that. But uh, we're, we're aiming to effectively demolition is going to take a period of around about four to five months. Uh, and then effectively they'll come out of the ground. It is their intent where possible where they can actually bring it in as a temporary facility onto the site, but I'll come back as an undertaking. Uh, thank you. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I can't support this either. Uh, and it has great parallels actually with the previous discussion about land management agreements. There's some inference that this facility will be protected by a land management agreement, uh, which in the last item uh, we were voting to overturn. Thankfully, we did not. Um, land management agreements provide no protection, whatever. They are not worth the paper they're written on. And they provide, uh, I would suggest to our ratepayers, no comfort, whatever. In fact, they are still reeling from uh, what is revealed in these papers. That is to say that council agreed on the 9th of June uh, to the revocation of the land management agreement. Uh, the developer submitted a development plan in July, and then we went to our rate papers in November and said, what do you think if we revoke the land management agreement? That is to say, this consultation is just a load of uh, whatever it is that goes into that toilet. Lord Mayor, uh, additionally, I know some ratepayers are very concerned that this now also reveals this decision to uh, demolish that area uh, was taken on the 9th of June and subsequently 
This council made a great hullabaloo in October about demanding heritage protection for the Sands and McDougall building, which was part of the demolition that was approved in June. It is a double dose of hypocrisy. It is just appalling. Now, quite separate to that, I'm appalled that we're handing our, our public facilities, we are flushing our public facilities into the hands of private, private operators. Um, it is a principle in local government that we are responsible for those core services, um, for roads, for rubbish, and I, I have to say for public toilets. This one will be in the hands of a private operator who is able to put forward to council that the facility be demolished, that the facility be terminated, that the operating hours be changed, um, and I, I see the administration shaking their head, but I see also the administration coming in here time after time after time, after all the promises that we won't change anything, it's protected and seeking to overturn it. Now look, um, I'm, I'm just appalled, and I think every ratepayer will. Now, some of my ratepayers are already saying to me, Lord Mayor, well, here you go, here's the proof that the council is in such a bleak financial position it's getting rid of its public toilets. Now, I don't accept that, um, but uh, I do accept that that is uh, in the background of this, and I am somewhat disappointed to read, as I have done, that any money from this uh, uh, this sale will go towards Capital Works. Capital Works, which were formally, right up until this minute, uh, funded through our general budget allocations. Um, Lord Councilor. Mayor, I can say no more and you won't let me, so I'll take my seat. Thank you. Um, members, I do note that uh, of our 25,000 ratepayers, we had seven submissions for on the consultation, which is in your pack. Um, now, I had a question for Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a, a few uh, questions of clarification. Can I ask um, how many other uh, public toilets in the city include changing places? See, um, there's two. There's one at the Central Market and also at the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. So three, uh, three all up, yep. and two in the CBD area. And if um, council was to get a submission um, to increase the operating hours of the facility, um, because I, I, by way of background, I am asking a question, Lord Mayor, but by way of background, I have had it asked of me previously by residents why the uh, facility has such narrow opening hours. Would council be able to uh, alter the opening hours so that it was open uh, for, um, or so there was greater access for members of the public after hours? Um, so, uh, so through the chair, I think Tom did um, take that on notice to try and have that discussion with the developer, so we could certainly get back to you on that. Okay. Matter. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, it's a question. Councillor Hyde. Oh, sorry. Councillor Mackey, you've spoken, so it's a question. Oh, did you only ask a question before? I only asked a question before. Sorry, my so apologies. If I might speak to it. Um, I'd, I'd like to move an amendment um, of an additional clause. Uh, I, I take advice from the administration as to where in the body of the recommendation it most appropriately sits, but if I can read, read this out. Um, uh, the additional clause reads, undertakes, comma, in addition to the land management agreement, comma, to explore additional contractual safeguards, comma, including council leasehold um, so that public amenities will be guaranteed um, uh, into the future. If I have a seconder. Um... Members, I'll look for a seconder. It has to be someone who hasn't spoken. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Mackey, do you wish to speak to that? Um, um, I'll reserve my right. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak to that? Members? Councillor Hyde? Um, I could see where Councillor Mackey was going with this, uh, and 
I think it's worth asking the question, but no, I, 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 don't, I do not see why when you can guarantee through what is, is really a stronger legal mechanism, a land management agreement, a stronger legal, legal mechanism that stays there in perpetuity, you can guarantee for free that the services you've got will continue on that site uh, through you guarantee that through your LMA, why would you even want to think about going into a leasehold arrangement whereby the city is going to fork out hundreds of thousands of dollars a year uh, to, to provide public toilets in this space when we've already, through the mechanism which is in front of us, other than the amendment, guaranteed that they'll be provided anyway. It's patently absurd. Um, uh, and so I, you know, I understand the need to explore uh, or contractual safeguards, but I would say that a contract um, uh, is 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 uh, less of a rigorous legal instrument than a land management agreement, because um, the contract is not attached to the title of the land. Um, the contract, usually a contract or a lease, will not exist in perpetuity um, on a site. So why we would want to have a less secure, less secure legal instrument in place, and also be paying for it. When it just doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, so I, I, I urge members to vote against this. I'm looking to the floor, Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, uh, let me just say that I've, I've listened a moment ago to some very disingenuous arguments. A land management agreement does not have the same or afford the same protection as a leasehold agreement. A land management agreement can be revoked by this chamber on the whim of the administration. And it was demonstrated tonight. Uh, it is not. Just as a point of, it's not on the whim of the administration, Councillor, it's on a decision of council. A proposal, a proposal coming from the administration on a whim can come to council and be endorsed, Lord Mayor. It can, and I'm not putting anything unreasonable to you. I'm just saying it can. And what I'm attempting to do is to compare it with the leasehold agreement. A leasehold agreement is subject to provisions by, uh, determined by state legislation. That, that is an infinitely superior agreement. It provides very substantial protections, often with financial penalties. Now, uh, I don't believe the argument that such an arrangement would be an unbearable cost. As members would be aware, this proposal before us is simply for the sale of the land. The council will continue to maintain the toilets. Council workers will continue to go in there. All this is proposed uh, to do is to provide more certainty than the kind of protection that comes from a piece of paper that's you know, not worth the print on it. Um, I entirely endorse this proposal and I don't see why uh, where a developer is keen for a development to proceed, where this is an important part of that development in respect of the air rights, a leasehold agreement can't be negotiated. It, it affords the ratepayers and the users of this city much greater protection. And indeed, if uh, there are any disagreements that arise, there are legislated mechanisms for the resolution of those disagreements. <laughs> This, this is a superior proposal. A and it is, of course, uh, no matter how sensitively and sensibly presented, it is a load of nonsense to suggest that a land management agreement is, is going to protect them. It's certainly not a view that's uh, out there in the community. You've only got to walk down Franklin Street and there are hundreds of people who will tell you land management agreements, huh, give me anything but one of those. Now the councillor has proposed something that is worth supporting. It's not going to cost a great deal of money, uh, and that is subject to the negotiation, of course, of the administration. Uh, why wouldn't you just take that proposal? It has no impact on the project proceeding. It has no impact on our commitment to the proceeding, except it provides a level of certainty that's otherwise not there. Sue, did you, I think, Sue, did you wish to speak? Uh, 
Um, just to clarify for Councillor Martin, you did actually say the previous item um, and you talked about whim of administration and then you did correct that when you followed up. So just to be absolutely clear, um, the previous item um, certainly isn't a whim of the administration to bring that through. Um, that land management agreement was in place since 2009 um, and as you've experienced you know, in your um, time on council that um, developments, the city, um, and opportunities do change over time um, and um, we do endeavour to work with the developers um, to absolutely recognise the original intent of that land manage ag management agreement but for an opportunity like this, for a site like this, um, we absolutely wouldn't just do, the, do it as a whim, um, we would give it due consideration and make sure that um, the facilities and ratepayers um, are uh, protected. Personal explanation. Sorry, a personal explanation, if I may. I was not implying that this was presented to us on a whim, nor that the other matter was presented no, to us. I think they were. I think they were the words that you. Sorry, I, members. I think they were the words that you used, Councillor. Well, let, let me say then, Lord Mayor, that was not my intent. What I was saying is that land management agreements can be changed on a whim. Oh, and, a, and again, well, I don't yeah, think land management figure, agreements. A figure of speech. Well, it's, uh, it's it is not it has not been taken as a figure of speech. It's been taken that it's coming in on the whim of the administration. Is what you said. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I have Councillor Sims. Did you wish to speak? Yes, yeah, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Speaking on the um, amendment. Uh, look, I thank um, Councillor Mackey for putting this forward. I think this is a good compromise um, and one. Uh, that I'm happy to uh, support. I, you know, I, I, I do pick up on some resistance in the room um, to this law there, but you know, I think we need to remember this is public land um, and it is um, a very important public um, amenity that we're talking about. I mean, there are only two um, changing places in the city that are publicly uh, available. And I think we have to do everything we can to ensure that the same um, level of service and access is provided to the community. And I think what Councillor Mackey is proposing is a good way forward. I don't think it's acceptable for us to just wash our hands of it and say, okay, you know, let's outsource it to a private provider. Um, even though I recognise administration's advice that there are going to be safeguards put in place. But I would feel much more comfortable um, were we to look at some additional con contractual um, options as Councillor Mackey has advocated. So I'm happy to um, support this amendment. I think it's a sensible way. Members, not uh, Councillor Hyde. Oh, you've already spoken. I just yeah, have a question. Um, uh, noting that the Associate Director McCready's looked at lots of property, I was wondering if the administration um, would have sort of a ballpark figure of how much it would cost per annum to lease 126 square metres um, you know, on the ground floor, what would otherwise be prime retail in, in, in Charlie. I mean, what, uh, what, what would we be talking about, 126 square metres? Uh, Tom, can you just confirm, please? Through you, Lord Mayor, depending on where the location is. So, for instance, if it was in the middle of Rundle Mall in the ground floor, you could reach anywhere from $3,000 up per square metre, probably more than that, significantly more. However, this is in James Place, which is uh, slightly less on the yeah, yeah. So, let's say it's what, $2,000 per square metre, 126 metres. So, 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 what's that? Two hundred and Over $250,000 a year. Is that my, am I correct? Enough? Thank you. Through, through you, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, the reality is that you're probably looking in the hundreds rather than thousands in regards to the lease rental per square metre in that location. Then don't sell it. It's free. Thank you. Have you any other questions? Uh, no, no? Right. members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Mackey to sum up. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I appreciate the uh, uh, attempt to uh, attach a dollar value to a, what is ultimately a negotiation. But uh, I operate businesses in, um, uh, with leases or MOAAs that have the same legal guarantee as leases for peppercorn. Um, there is just because a ground floor square metre pl uh, uh, footprint on, on the commercial footprint on James Place uh, has a certain value per uh, price per square metre does not preclude us 
from negotiating uh, a lot with long-term security, um, a, a peppercorn dollar a year or whatever um, is deemed peppercorn in, in this day and age. Um, I, 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 I want to see the, the greatest guarantee of public assurity that there will continue to be for decades to come, as there has been for a very, very long time, public toilets and changing rooms um, that, um, as we know, there are very few uh, in the city. And uh, once upon a time, there were a lot more. Um, I encourage uh, uh, council uh, to support the amendment. Um, members, we're voting on this. Uh, those in favour, those against, that is lost. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. Would all those in favour of the amendment please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Members, that takes us back to the substantive. Um, if there's no further speakers, I'll go back to the mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, I just want to put a little bit into perspective, Lord Mayor, what's, you know, what's being discussed tonight. And judging by the rhetoric um, from some of my colleagues, uh, what may actually play out here is that a handful of city councillors who are charged with making the best governance decisions for the city will actually end up voting against this proposal in front of us. Um, and if, if they are successful in voting down this motion, they would jeopardise uh, something that has been lauded and I'll pull from Councillor Martin. I've read, I have read in the newspaper, Lord Mayor, I have it on good authority, that there is a building on King William Street that is about to be uh, built or, or is going through the motions of being built. Um, they've secured an anchor tenant, which is a government tenant, um, uh, and it will be the biggest office building in Adelaide with 40,000 square metres of office space and 3,000 square metres of retail. Now, at the same time that this is happening, um, the City Council has rather judiciously uh, gone about and secured a public toilet there in perpetuity attached to the title. And I commend the administration um, on that. Maybe if they could go out and women produce public toilets everywhere, we wouldn't be having this argument. But um, uh, but they're far too thorough. They don't do things on whims. But Lord Mayor, councillors are going to vote against this $450 million development. That is effectively what's happening here. It is patently absurd. If you vote against this, you're voting against 1,500 jobs being created during construction. You're voting against 150 apprenticeships being created during construction. You're voting against rates collected by the City of Adelaide in well, I mean, That's a misrepresentation and you're allowing that to occur? Councillor Martin, is there a particular point of clarification that you wish to make? Yes, the point is that we are voting in regard to the uh, the toilet arrangements associated with a project, not against a project. That has been made clear by every speaker. Voting to stymie a $450 million development. Well, at the same time, Lord Mayor, we've got councillors coming into the chamber and saying, oh, King William Street's pretty shabby. Well, yeah, something Cross Arcade's pretty shabby, and that's about to be done up. So why wouldn't you actually work with them and try and get a good outcome for the street and for the city? It's ridiculous. And, and coming in here and on the one hand saying, oh, we must protect the LMAs, we must protect the LMAs, and then in the other breath saying he's LMAs are pointless. He, he is not attacking anyone, he's attacking, he's giving his argument. So, so Lord Mayor, there's, there's so many, the word disingenuous was thrown out. Oh, he's not earlier. summing up his And this is, this is the most disingenuous, this is the most disingenuous argument. The toilets will be secured in perpetuity um, by this excellent work prepared by the administration. Um, uh, I hope that this proposal will get up, this recommendation, because we desperately need construction within the City of Adelaide. We need uh, to develop in a responsible way, and that's what this uh, premier world-class building does. Uh, it will deliver rates in perpetuity to us, um, which will then go and help fund other public toilets within the City of Adelaide. So uh, that's the proposal in front of us, and I hope members make the right decision. And I would just point of Point of order, Lord Mayor, this is incredibly misleading. Arguments about rates 
for a building in which the tenant is a state government agency, you allow this stuff to happen. He makes it up as he goes. It's not a point of order. It's not a point of order. And I will be you reporting the vote. So I'll be asking for a division. Thank you, Lord. No, he's not <coughs> summing up Councillor Moran um, because Councillor Kira moved it. So he was just speaking to. So Councillor Kira, did you wish to sum up? Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, division. that is carried. Council members, a division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canong, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Hyde. Members, uh, we are now going to point a letter, uh, item 11. Um, there are two items uh, with a request for consideration and confidence. Each item will require a motion and decision to order the exclusion of public to enable consideration and confidence. Uh, members, can I have a move and a seconder for a motion to order the exclusion of the public for item 12.1.1, which is the contract award report supply of sweepers? Look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Second to Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, Councillor wish to speak. If not, Councillor Knoll to sum up. Members of the vote, those in favour, those against. Thank you. That is carried. Uh, members, can I have a move and a second to promotion to order the exclusion for the public for item 12.1.2, which is the Capital City Annual Report 2019-2020. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Second to Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. Thank you. Members? Councillor Sims? Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. I'd just like to query um, precisely why this um, matter is in confidence. Uh, see? I've seen, the, I've seen the, uh, the explanation in in the papers, but would it be possible for elements of um, the confidential material to be uh, redacted? Uh, through the presiding member, um, my understanding is there's nothing within uh, the annual report that will need to be redacted. It's been requested to be um, in confidence because it hasn't yet been tabled in Parliament. Um, that will happen, um, I understand, when Parliament next sits, which is next week. So once it has been tabled in Parliament, we will lift confidentiality and the report in full will be available to the public. Thank you. Uh, members, if not, back to move to sum up. Councillor Knoll. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, if there are members of the public and staff, thank you for your attendance the first part of the meeting. Um, members of the public and staff not associated with item 12.1.1 and 4.1.2, we please ask you now to leave the council chamber. The streaming will cease.
queue and if you can let me know when we've commenced streaming. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, item 13 is Lord Mayor's report uh, for January 2021. Um, well, it's been a busy and exciting start to 2021, given we're now just over two years into the current council term. I'm looking forward to working with you all this year to deliver several important projects and initiatives as outlined in our 20 to 20 to 2024 strategic plan. Uh, I am committed to delivering on our promise for Main Street master plans, developing up long-term vision as well as delivery of infrastructure improvement plans and activation plans for O'Connell Street, Melbourne Street and Hunt Street, as well as delivery of Harney Street and Munter Street improvements. I'm also looking forward to progressing the Parklands Foundation, um, progressing AIDA and delivering on a number of art and cultural initiatives and continuing discussions with the state government on a number of possible joint funding and initiatives. On Thursday the 21st of January, I officially handed over the Chair of the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors to Adrian Schwinner, who is the Lord Mayor of Brisbane. I thoroughly enjoyed my experience of chairing Triple CLM during 2022, uh, as eventful a year as it was, and I look forward to continuing to represent the uh, interests of the City of Adelaide at the Triple CLM going forward. Construction of the new city skate park in Gladys Elphick Park, Nanunga Park 25, was officially commenced on Friday the 22nd of January. The occasion was marked with the turning of the SOD media call with myself, the Deputy Premier, the Honourable Vicky Chapman MP, the Honourable Minister Corey Wingard, Minister of Recreation, Sport and Racing, and the Honourable Minister Rachel Sanderson, Member for Adelaide. The new city skate park is due to be completed later this year. It is going to be absolutely brilliant to have a dedicated space for skating and other recreational activities, which are both for, of course, the youth of Adelaide and the whole community to enjoy. Um, I also acknowledge the work that the team has done to engage with the skater community and the design that they have actually uh, ended up with, uh, which it goes in and around the trees and affords a lot of shade as well as a fantastic skate skating. Yeah facility. Earlier this week, on Tuesday the 26th of January, I attended the smoking ceremony with Ghana Elders in Botanic Park. It was an extremely moving start to the day where we were able to connect with the land and hear stories of the traditional custodians whose ancestral land we gather on. Following the smoking ceremony, I hosted a special Australia Day citizenship ceremony and the 2021 Citizen of the Year Awards at the Adelaide Town Hall. I conferred 16 new Australians as part of the citizenship ceremony and presented the Citizen of the Year Award to Hayden Bromley, a well-respected oh, sorry, and Martha man for his work in cultural awareness and education. Uh, the Young Citizen of the Year Award to Watna Kvai, who is an inspirational young man who's battled his own mental health issues to complete his studies while assisting in creating a youth support group for international students who have been impacted by COVID-19. And the Community Event of the Year Award to for the uh, Bushfire Appeal Gala Dinner organised by Kelly Noble and Steve Tester, which raised over 380000 for South Australian families and businesses affected by last summer's bushfires. Um, in particular, um, those that were with us, Hayden Bromley, who's our Citizen of the Year, made a beautiful speech about the meaning of the day to our Aboriginal community. Um, and uh, it was with um, uh, a lot of, uh, hum he was very humble in accepting the award because I know it was very difficult for him to be there on the day, um, but he was truly honoured. Following the Citizenship Ceremony and Awards, I attended the Aus Day at the at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. Um, this morning I attended a media call to announce the State Commission Assessment Panel, SCAP, had approved uh, the Adelaide Central Market Arcade redevelopment to be known as Market Square. The 400 million redevelopment is a significant investment from IDC property and is projected to create over a thousand jobs um, in its construction with annual precinct visitor numbers to uh, forecast to rise by over a million dollars once travel is reinstated, in addition to the nine million people that currently visit the area. We've got a big year ahead of us and I look forward to keeping you all updated and continue to work together to deliver for and behalf of the community. Thank you members, I look for someone to move that be accepted. Thank you Councillor Abraham today, Second Deputy Lord Mayor Kouros. Members, 
Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, item 14 are the councillor reports, uh, which is for noting. I'll we'll look for, um, actually, first I'll do that. Councillor Mackey. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like, on behalf of a, a resident and ratepayer of the City of Adelaide, resident of North Adelaide, to make a presentation to you for the Council um, of uh, one of the limited edition of um, the new uh, publication by acclaimed photographer Alex Frame, Landscapes of South Australia. Um, it is a wonderful publication. I've, I've personally given it to many people since its release just before Christmas. And um, uh, Alex contacted me and asked, would I be kind enough to make a presentation uh, to the council? That's fabulous. Thank you, Councillor Monkey. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, and if you could uh, give our thanks to Alex Frame for his gift to the council. Um, can, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, chorus. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I attend on your behalf. I attended the Pongal Festival I think on the 14th of January, and uh, it was the first time that they had the festival that the Tamil um, Adelaide Tamil Association had their festival at Victoria Square. Um, and uh, it was a, a very beautiful event, very colourful, very successful event. And at the event, they presented me with uh, an award to thank the City of Adelaide for their support and contribution to the Tamil community. Members, I'll look for a mover for the report. Thank Councillor Sims, seeing it at Councillor Abraham's day. Uh, members, any comments? If not, to the move to sum up. Uh, to the vote, those in favour, those against. Thank you, that's carried. Uh, members, we have seven questions on notice this evening, which we'll take as read with the leave of the chamber. If I could have a show of hands. Thank you, members. We'll take those as read. Um, item 16 is questions without notice. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And <clears throat> I refer to uh, the news today that SCAP has approved the um, central market redevelopment. Is administration aware of the SA Housing Authority's submission to SCAP that the affordable housing component of the central market redevelopment does not comply with relevant regulations? And if so, what is their response? Uh, thank you, Councillor Sims. Acting C. Uh, through the presiding member, we've had a couple of uh, council members ask this question in the last couple of days on the back of housing SA's submission uh, to SCAP. Um, so SCAP was, uh, sorry, Housing SA was unaware of the contractual arrangement that we have with ICD to deliver on the 15% affordable housing, because obviously it's contractual and it's in confidence. Um, we have since spoken with Housing SA and made them aware and they're comfortable that the approach that we have um, is good. Um, they are also um, aware that ICD will be liaising to ensure um, that those 90 days um, that we have in place through that contract um, to secure um, the affordable housing component um, is run through uh, the scheme with Housing SA. So that's still to be worked through, but they're certainly aware and comfortable of the um, contract that we have with ICD. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Baron. And a supplementary um, question. What steps will be taken by administration to ensure that any affordable housing made available for the stipulated period of 90 days is taken up? 
through the presiding member, um, we'll work with Housing SA and ICD to ensure that um, that the um, mechanism that Housing SA use, which is um, a waiting list and a list of pre-registered people are connected through to the proposal. Um, and um, in conversations with staff this week, um, we've talked about other things that we might be able to do over and above any contractual arrangements with ICD to help share and promote the opportunity to um, relevant um, potential participants in the scheme. Okay, thank you. Lord Mayor, could I request that those responses be recorded in the minutes? Uh, questions without notice aren't generally recorded in the minutes, only, only if they're on notice. Uh, okay. Okay, so we need a motion, which is a move and a second to have so those moved. answered. And so I need a seconder. Thank you. Um, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that's great. Thank you, Thank uh, you. Councillor Sim. So they will be recorded. Uh, I think it's uh, good to have that on the record that we've actually done all our due diligence around the affordable housing component um, um, and are working with the State Housing Authority. Uh, Councillor Hyde, did you have a question without notice? Yeah, just following up on that. Um, so my read of the requirements is that we have it for 90 days, but um, Housing SA's requirements are actually only for 30 days. Is that correct? That is correct. So we've actually gone above and beyond what they would usually uh, mandate. Is that correct? That is correct. Excellent. Um, uh, and what's the primary legal mechanism that they use for ensuring that affordable housing is, um, is included in a development? Um, through the presiding member, my understanding, and I'm not an expert, um, is that it's um, a policy position um, and really there's a reliance on the developer to secure that 15% um, in that 30-day period. And then um, if there's any uh, stock left over, then that goes back into the commercial part of the development. That's my understanding. Is the administration aware that it could be a land management agreement that's put in place to actually manage these contracts? Um, that... We are aware, and uh, that has become under discussion that isn't required because it's part of our contractual arrangement. Precisely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Marshall, did you have a Yes, just a, a follow up question to the answer to 15.1 in relation to the uh, significant job losses at Council. The administration says that the cost of the separations was six million nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars and uh, sorry and thirty thirty six cents no thirty six dollars sorry um, is is that the cost of the redundancies or is it cost the cost of redundancies plus the payment of entitlements including periods of notice annual leave and so on. Well, through the presiding member, at um, paragraph three, you asked what it was excluding leave entitlements. So my understanding is they have calculated that excluding um, long service leave and annual leave. Okay, fine. I just wanted to confirm it. Thank you. And Lord Mayor, I, I have another one in respect of 15.3, if I may. Just for the sake of clarity, uh, the cost to council of the central uh, market arcade returnable works according to the agreement signed by the Lord Mayor is $54 million. Does the administration mean when it says at 15.3, the cost is $27 million, uh, uh, that that is the net figure and not the gross figure? Is that correct? It doesn't say. Acting C. Uh, through the presiding member, unfortunately, Mr. McCready's left, and he has repeated this, even I think so, ad nauseum, um, over the last few months, and I actually can't remember. So, um, apologies, Councillor Martin. Oh, that's I will right. I'm to happy take to that take on that notice. On notice. Yes, Thank I you. Have. Yes, I look forward to the answer. Um, and Lord Mayor, just finally, in respect of the Central Market Arcade development and the answer to 15.3, um, the administration has published that the Three Tower development. Uh, with the uh, the new shopping precinct, the International Hotel uh, and more, uh, will produce 260 car parks. Uh, could the administration tell us um, uh, how many car parks uh, that is in addition to 
uh, the car parks which are currently provided. So we've currently got just over a thousand car parks. We will, as part of the construction, we'll lose 260 car parks and those 260 car parks will be reinstated once the development is complete. So there's, there's no net increase in car park? In our car park. Our car park. In our development? In our car park. So we'll lose 260 and they'll be reinstated. So there's no net increase. In Again, we'll take that one on notice. Okay, thank you. That's a gross increase. Though. Members, uh, well, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Lord Mayor, I, I did have a question without notice, but I'm going to leave it because it was very similar to Councillor Sim, so uh, having to take that um, response that was provided. Thank you. Councillor Hyde. Um, just to follow on to the uh, excellent answer on the Central Market Arcade, um, could the administration, I appreciate you may have to take some notice, but could you please um, provide to the council uh, particulars which detail how much rent we're expected to receive uh, from uh, the commercial aspects of the arcade that we retain um, per annum, um, uh, and also the rates we're expected to collect from the total development per annum? No. We'll take it on notice just to make sure that we've got the right, uh, and you. we'll distribute that to all members. Members, if there's no further questions on notice, that takes us to item 17 on tonight's agenda, uh, which are motions on notice. Um, Councillor Moran, uh, your no, sorry, my apologies. 17.1 is Councillor Martin. Notice on notice, e news. Councillor Martin. Emus, emus, e news, news. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, uh, can I just say that I cannot uh, and have not ever been able to access e news. So, Councillor Martin, I'll just look for a seconder. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I say I have not and have never been able to access e news? I use a device I own that is not owned by the council and I cannot access it. So um, it is uh, for me one of the great mysteries of life. I'm happy to talk to you about the others at some other time, but E! News is at the top of the list of mysteries at this time. Um, it is uh, uh, for the benefit of people who are viewing this discussion, the means by which the administration communicates information to elected members. Um, uh, however, I do want to say that the response which has been provided uh, to this motion by the administration at three and four is just simply not correct. Um, uh, the mechanism, this is the information mechanism, the, the thing that tells us about street closures, about demonstrations in the city and so forth, um, has been used uh, specifically um, to avoid uh, and that is the consequence, by the way, the consequence, it may not be the intention, but it's the consequence that the chamber is avoided um, and reports which have been requested by the elected body are presented on e-news and not to the elected body. And an example of that too, by the way, was a motion approved by this council last year to provide a report on uh, safety at a well-known intersection. Uh, it provided a date, a time frame in which uh, it was requested that report to be presented, and it came to us all as an email. Um, that was it, and that was the final part. Um, the request to council uh, was ignored. Now, um, questioning of that report, therefore, and requests for further information uh, were not possible. Uh, and uh, I was disturbed by that. And in fact, uh, it's the subject of uh, another process that I've implemented um, in recent times. Now, I don't have any objection to um, e-news providing information to us about what goes on in the city, city activities and so on, um, from street protests, street maintenance. I think that's really appropriate and it should be distributed in a newsletter style. But I don't think it's ever appropriate for matters which have been raised in the chamber, for which reports to the chamber are requested, for which there are motions from the chamber should be uh, replied to um, via e-news. Now, I'm not sure I have much support for this. I don't know, I haven't canvassed that, but I would hope 
that the elected members uh, would continue to support e-news as an information vehicle, but assert their right to have matters which they request come back to the chamber, come back to the chamber. And that is the, uh, the only intention of this motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes. um, I too um, don't like e-news, and I've made that very clear to uh, this CEO and the previous CEO, but still it lumbers on. It's the uh, news of lost dreams and uh, dissatisfaction. Uh, Donna, a wonderful secretary who's no longer with us, did uh, retype it into a different form. Now, I, I know the young gentleman to my left will put a spirited de defence of e-news as per ad nauseum the usual. Um, however, it is the administration's job to give the councillors the information in the form that they request. If I want it written on bark with charcoal, and that's the only way I can absorb it, then that should be given to me. We finally won the paper wars. Um, it is no good saying, well, if you're too stupid to read e-news uh, and you're not interested enough to read e-news, then you shouldn't get the information. We are all equal city councillors here. I cannot access e-news. I don't want to access it in that form. I want an email and anything political comes back to chamber. I agree with Phil. I don't agree with Phil in that e-news e is suitable for any form of communication. If Team Adelaide want to continue to use e-news, that's fine. They can be sent e-news. I, for the hundredth time, do not want to be communicated by with e-news. Now, if that's ignored, that's a dereliction of this council's duty to its individual councillors to get information in the way they are comfortable. I am not comfortable with e-news for the millionth time. And I think, Councillor Moran, to that end, as you said earlier in your piece, Donna has actually been cut and pasting and sending it to you via email. So you are so you are receiving the news in the form that you are asking for it. Um, I will go to Councillor Sims. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Look, I have a slightly different position to Councillor Moran on this one in that I do want to receive e-news, but I haven't been able <laughs> to work out how to do so. Um, I'm not the most uh, tech um, savvy uh, person. I, I must um, confess that will shock um, councillors, I'm sure, um, given my youth, but I'm not the most um, tech savvy person and I have had difficulty accessing e-news over the years and I have tried and tried to um, rectify that problem. Um, I don't know what the source of the problem is. It seems sometimes I time out, a password resets, it works on some devices, not others. Um, so as a result, I have found I have missed um, critical information. Um, I think though there's a broader point here which Councillor Martin um, touched on, and that is the fact that if there is a resolution of council, it is my expectation that there be a report made back to council, irrespective of the ongoing communication using e-news or another means around general uh, council business. I do think if this council has passed a resolution, members should be given a report to let them know what the outcome was in a formal way, because then it's clear as well to the community what action has um, been taken. And like Councillor Martin, I have um, had the experience of having um, resolutions passed on the floor of council. Not as many as I would like, Lord Mayor, but I have had a few passed on the floor of council. And um, I've followed up and tried to find out where it's up to and been told, oh, there was a message in the news um, saying that that wasn't going to be progressed. And I think that's not satisfactory for the people that we represent who want to know um, the status of issues that we have raised on their behalf. So um, I am supportive of this, um, if only because I think it ensures that um, there is some accountability um, of this council to the ratepayers in terms of sharing information about the status of, of motions. And I must say, Lord Mayor, I mean no disrespect to administration in making those comments, um, and in particular, no disrespect to anyone who's working on putting together any news. I know it's a difficult um, thing to do, and there's lots of information to cover, but I think an easy process solution would be a report to council on the status of councillor motions rather than just relying on a note in the news. Uh, 
Um, just as a just to that last point, Councillor Sims, we do report on the status of motions to councillors. Well, if that's the case, Lord Mayor, I was advised uh, of the status of several of my motions. I was told there was a note in E News saying that we're not being correct. Uh, okay, so I'm that's, talking that's as a collective. So yeah, yeah. thank you, uh, Councillor Hyde. Did you wish to speak? Um, yes, just quickly, because um, this is not really something that should be debated in the chamber, but um, uh, we'll have to, because there's been so much, so much nonsense. Yeah, so that's been put out there. Can we, are you I'm going to sorry, speak to the motion I was responding to an you? interjection, Lord Mayor. Um, I have two devices, which I own and are not on council networks. They both receive e-news. I can look at e-news on my phone, I can look at e-news on my laptop. Um, so actually, I've actually requested to be taken off the e-news distribution list because I find the emails to be onerous. And in actual fact, SharePoint is quite a, 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 a satisfactory system. And I know that I can just put a little reminder in my calendar um, so that I can hop on the desktop and scroll through all the e-news that have happened that week. I don't need to get an email every time an e-news goes out. You know, I can just look at the list and you can scroll back. It's fantastic. You can see things Thank going you. back uh, years. Thank you. We're talking to the motion? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm talking yeah. to the motion. The motion is just absurd. Another absurd debate, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, E-News is a perfectly uh, satisfactory system. Um, it is a very effective and efficient way to distribute information to members. Um, if people are having trouble accessing it, I'll, I'm happy to help them. Um, I'm, you know, most generous I am. Oh, I'll, even help, oh, Moran. No, I'll even help Councillor Moran. I'll even help Councillor members. Um, uh, but failing that, I would encourage them to engage our wonderful staff um, who helped me set it up in the first instance. Um, that's that's what they're here for. Um, uh, failing that, again, there is the uh, progress of elected member motions, which is reported on uh, at council meetings. It's a, it, opens up as a link, and I know people have trouble with links as well, but uh, as a spreadsheet that you can go through. So um, we have many, many avenues, and of course you can always just maintain your own list and ask questions about motions, um, and I'd hope if there were topics that you were interested in, you would do that regardless um, and not wait for the administration just to come back to you. So um, this is a silly motion, Lord Mayor. Uh, E-news is a good form of disseminating information. Uh, uh, the, the, the inner cynic in me thinks it's a ploy to further pad out um, agendas, which are already clogged up with rubbish, um, often which shouldn't be coming to the chamber. So, 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 so,
this is, sounds interesting, but I, I actually ag agree with Councillor Martin is that the final reports that are requested through Council uh, should actually come back through the Council agenda, um, as in point three. So that if it's the decision that specifically requests a report back to Council members, then it's done via the Council agenda. I do note it for that it uh, says it's only done through exceptional circumstances through e-news. Um, the e-news is a great way of disseminating information and I think it should con continue to be that, however you're, however you're accessing it. Um, there are members that it is cut and pasted into a, uh, an email if they're not able to access it. Um, the majority of members are. We're also, all members are provided with devices from the City Council so that they uh, don't have the problems with access that you can have if you're using your own devices. And I would encourage members to use those devices that are issued as council members. Um, but in this instance, um, I agree, Councillor Martin, that final report should come through the council agenda. Um, even if they're for noting, we can actually go through that on block as we do when they're just closing things off. Um, members, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. I agree with the Lord Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Members, we have uh, item 17.2, which is Councillor Moran, um, King William Street, King, Clean Zimmer Street. Yes, I vote that the, we increase frequency and improve the cleaning of King William Street to address its dirty conditions, liaise with property owners on King William Street to assist them to improve the cleanliness of their street frontage. Thank you. And I have a secondary in Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Uh, look, there's not much. I've read the council report here, um, and uh, anybody that lives and works in the city and recreates knows that that strip between Peary Street and Rundle Mall is filthy. Um, and the shops are neglected. Uh, going a little bit further down to North Terrace, you've got uh, Hague's Chocolate. We spent a fortune on, I don't know who owns that building, we spent a fortune on the Beehive Corner. The veranda has never been looked after and is now propped up with builders poles. Uh, some of the problem with uh, King William Street is the number of vulnerable um, people that are, um, either recreate there during the day, begging or sleep there at night. Um, I walk down there every day and there's not a day that goes past that I'm not uh, sticking, my, sticking to the footpath through vomit, urine and other detritus there. Now, when I was talking on the radio, ABC radio today, the um, broadcaster quite rightly said, well, and this is surely a sign of a much bigger problem. My answer to that was yes, we are, but we are the council. So cleaning and helping business owners with their shop fronts is, is there, is our, um, in our ballywick. However, uh, I think you would have all seen the wonderful photo on the front page of the advertiser with uh, Mr Stevens and his um, offsider giving a homeless person in this very strip of street a mask. And then the next day we read that all the homeless people had been rehoused in hotels and motels for the pandemic. Well, I can tell you that the, the, the hotels and motels have released these uh, poor people and they're back there. The other day I was walking down King William Street and a man lying across the footpath with a large group of people was, was belting his arm and intravenous injecting. And that was at one o'clock in a weekday with children and people walking past. Now, of course, your heart goes out to somebody that's in that situation. But also, it is our job and the police's job and the government's job to one, ours is to clean the streets and make them look good. Uh, we've spent a fortune on the Mintaro slates, never been maintained properly. In fact, it wasn't even laying properly. Half of the rock, uh, there's water underneath them. On a previous council, I had to remind the administration we hadn't done the other side of the street yet. Um, so it has not been, um, it's been an expensive uh, failure and it's a failure in ours that we did not get people to lie properly. The services come in and cut through the, the um, cut through the slates, uh, half of it is replaced now with black bitumen. Uh, so we really need to lift our game here. I have rung and rung and rung, and I must say, Claire, the acting CEO, has been very responsive in sending cleaners round from Rundle Mall. But we need to do more. We need to get on the government's back again and say, look, these people are vulnerable. They're sleeping in our streets. There's a, a heartbreaking woman that's got no eyes, that sits on the corner of 
of Rundle Mall. She's there every day. And I call that number, just like one more minute. I call that number. Members, the, one, members one more minute. And the email address that we told to contact people. Donna was constantly on the phone. Nobody ever comes. I walk there the next day, that person's still there. They might have been assessed or something, but they're still sleeping rough in their own, half the time, complete, completely unwell. I don't know what other words to say. Um, so we're not cleaning it enough. This is a special street that needs special cleaning because basically it's acting like Christmas Island for our mentally ill. Um, it upsets me, I know it upsets the um, administrators that have to go and clean up. We need to get to the police, tell them to stop the illegal... Those toilets, by the way, inside the cross that we're lauding, nobody go in there. Every time I go in there, there's a drug deal going or somebody screaming his head off on ice, having gone into the female's toilets instead of the male toilets. It is not safe. That's why we need toilets on roadways, because they're safe, not inside buildings. But anyway, I, I urge us to increase our cleaning and the other things I think we're probably doing, trying to get the police down there, trying to get the social services down there. It's not working, but I know we're trying to do it. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Okay. Members? Councillor Mackey? Um, um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Councillor Moran, I'm, I'm very grateful that you uh, expressed in it in your comments that you're, about your heart going out, as indeed it does of all of us, to um, vulnerable people who are homeless and sleeping rough anywhere in the city. Um, uh, King William Street just happens to be a, a very prominent location. Um, uh, but I, I, I want to support the motion, noting that this, this is actually about cleanliness, it, it's not about homelessness. Um, and just remind members that I would urge them to um, support the motion. Thank you. Members of oh, uh, Councillor Knoll? Just a question of administration. I mean, uh, given that we're, we're talking about increased cleaning, how are you going to be able to do that considering you are doing it every day, etc.? What is it that you can do uh, that will make this situation better in a, in a practical sense? I do see you. Um, through the presiding member, the administration comment does outline uh, ways in which that can be done, but uh, Mr Hurtigan, do you want to elaborate further, please? Uh, through the uh, Lord Mayor, I, um, I think one of the one of the things that was quite well explained by Councillor Moran was that the, um, the, the cleansing teams go out there and it's very difficult for them to move or relocate the people on site, so they give them a reasonably wide berth um, and give them their space. Um, I, I think one problem would help, solving one problem may help solve the other, and, and vice versa. It's a bit of a catch 22 situation in there. Thank you. Councillor Martin, did you have your hand up before? Yeah, but if it comes to the city, it's always one of them. I'll have to go after you, Councillor. Okay. Oh, okay. After you? After you. After you. Uh, look, Lord Mayor, um, I uh, I agree with this uh, proposal and I acknowledge it is about uh, about cleaning and I think uh, I often reflect on the conversations we have in this place about how you get more people to the city and really there are, there are two simple answers. The first is parking that's as cheap as it is in the suburbs and the second is a clean city, a place that looks good. Um, and currently uh, we often either um, the parking's expensive and the streets are dirty, particularly King William Street. And it's not just a matter of dirt. And by the way, in saying this, I'm, I'm not seeking to denigrate our staff or the job that they do. I'm saying that the task is significantly greater than the resources we are currently throwing at it. Uh, and it extends to the condition of the pavements. Uh, a former speaker mentioned that we have replaced slate with asphalt there are gaps on the footpath where bits of slate have come out, possibly been used as missiles. There are other parts that are concrete sitting next to slate. They are mismatched, all of which detracts from uh, the amenity of the place and its reputation as a ceremonial boulevard. Um, I invite members to go outside and have a look outside Town Hall. There's a piece of uh, yellow and black tape on a piece of payment that, that's been sitting there waiting for maintenance for such a long period 
I think next week I'm assembling a small group of people to go and sing happy birthday to the tape. Nothing has happened to it. It's just sat there. Now, um, I know that uh, there are financial pressures on this council, but whatever they are, our first priority has always got to be the public realm, ensuring that it is up to standard. And uh, may I suggest, and it's uh, possibly going to be regarded by some as a bit radical, but may I suggest that we adopt the procedure of the operators of the tram system in the city, where, as far as I can tell, every night, they get up with high pressure water hoses and clean the, the tram stops. They are perfectly clean. Now, I know in the past there have been objections from people who say, well, that's a waste of water. But we actually now have a system in this city where all storm water is treated and recycled. We buy it, tons of it in uh, purple pipes and we spray it all over the parklands. There is no environmental impediment in my mind. I'm open to be convinced no environmental impediment to hosing the footpaths, just like they do in New York, just like they do in Paris and many parts of the world. It would make a very substantial difference to the look and feel of our footpaths, provided that we additionally do the maintenance that's required. It really does require uh, a substantial effort on the part of this council, the elected members and the administration to address this. Uh, I know it is becoming an issue for our ratepayers. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm supportive of this as well, but um, in supporting it, I, I do want to make it clear that, um, as Councillor Mackey has said, this isn't a motion around um, homelessness. Um, and if we uh, want to deal with the crisis um, of homelessness in our city, uh, the solution around that is more social housing. Um, and. Um, the, uh, the solution around that, Lord Mayor, is uh, more social housing and advocating for uh, government investment in that um, and, uh, and affordable housing. That's what's going to deal with the crisis of um, homelessness. I do think in terms of having clean streets, um, in the middle of a pandemic in particular, when um, residents are particularly concerned about their health, um, it's important to ensure that our streets are you know, clean and in optimum condition. Um, I do think there are some ongoing issues on um, King William Street. I know of people that have slipped. I myself have fallen over there before after a, um, a bit of rain. And I think it's because of the nature of the pavers and the, the fact that they absorb a lot of grime. If you have some rain, that become slippery. Um, that is of concern, um, and it's a concern that residents have raised um, with me in the past. Um, so I think it is important we try and do what we can to keep the, the streets as um, as clean as possible, particularly given the fact that we're in the middle of a, um, a pandemic. Thank you. Councillor Kerra, did you have your hand up? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll put forward an amendment, um, please, um, uh, and that is to uh, remove section one and uh, add uh, to point two. Um, add to point two, uh, remove the full stop, add a comma, um, and uh, provide council. Sorry, I'm just going to use the administration. Just, just, sorry, I just need one second. Um, prepare a plan for improvements to the uh, street environment. Uh, including uh, extra cleaning uh, where feasible, full stop. And I seek a second. Thank you. Um, oh, you can see yes, talk, just, you can talk to it, gentlemen. Sorry, I'm just checking that. But still, an English proposal in English. Councillor Kerr, it does seem to be repeating what is in point one. Um, I may put to you that it uh, does uh, include an increase in the cleaning. Uh, it's not negating. And to be honest, I'm really trying to get to the spirit of the matter. Um, it does propose an increase in cleaning, so I don't see that that's a negative. But the point one says increases the frequency and improves the cleaning. Yes. So what's the problem? The what's the problem? Sorry, what, what are you saying? Sorry, I'm just not sure that what you've just amended 
um, is different to what is there? Oh, um, no, because it says we're feasible. Okay, right, so if I, if I may speak to it, I can clarify. Um, um, well, I've got a, um, actually one minute. Look, 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 the original motion dictates just, that the just administration... A moment. Just a moment. Okay. Um, you've got a seconder in the Deputy Lord Mayor. You can speak to it. Okay, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, the original, the issue is that the, as we've seen from the report, the street is cleaned daily. Uh, it's cleaned seven days a week. Uh, the problem with the original motion is that it dictates an increase in the frequency of cleaning. Uh, and he does that before we have a proper report canvassing whether that's even feasible. So it puts the administration in a particularly onerous position. Uh, this amendment, on the other hand, uh, does, I submit, uh, uh, does come to the party in the sense that it does, uh, it does uh, recognise that there may... That, what? what was that Sorry. Please, that was because the bell is started from when you started speaking. The two seconds bell. Okay, so this, uh, on the other hand, upholds the spirit of the motion. It does not put the administration in that particularly onerous position of forcing a double cleaning, which may not be feasible, but it does recognise there's an issue. Uh, it allows a report to come forward, um, and it really is just progressing the matter in a way that I think is, is productive and sensible. Deputy Lord Mayor, that's the second. Did you speak to it? Thank you. Councillor Moran? I just despair at this sort of uh, shenanigans. Um, the, the motion, of course it's feasible. Um, I, I've done the hard work on this, spoken to the administration, we've been looking at this for a long time, to swoop in and move almost an identical motion just to get your name on that no, issue not, no. is ridiculous. Can, can, it is exactly what it's about. Councillor Kerra. The, the job of this council is to direct the administration and the job of this council is to do it in formal council meetings. I mean, I could have spoken to general managers way back, and I did, to, to increase cleaning and they were prepared to do that, but that's not the right way to do it. We issue our instructions and writing orders to the administration through this chamber, not for a endless time-wasting report. Well, sorry, point of order. I'm happy for this to be a variation if the, the movement of the amendment is happy with that. Um, don't I, I don't need it to be an amendment. It can be a variation. I, I don't want uh, to have a report brought back for council. I don't want to. I do my job as an area councillor. I walk down that street all the time. I talk to the administration. It needs extra cleaning. No matter how many times it's done now, it is not clean enough. So we don't need a report. I could write, knock you one out at dinner tonight, a report to say this street is below par. It's been on the front page of the advertiser, Christopher Pine and Caleb Bond. Both made the point. It makes them, it's, it's just so silly to ask for a report on something we know. And no, I'm not gonna change my motion. And I hope that you don't vote for it. Let's just say increase the frequency and improve the cleaning of King William Street. The administration can work out what increase means. There are easy ways to wash street. Our water now no longer needs to be dammed in the gutter as it used to when we cleaned the street with water. Hence, we bought the dry cleaning ones that don't pick up vomit detritus. It needs to be washed. And that water now goes down to our thing and is recycled back to our parkland. So we don't have to do that. The reason we're not cleaning the streets like Paris, London and, uh, and all those other lovely cities like Adelaide um, is because we, we didn't recycle our water. We do now. We can get out and hot wash our streets like New York does. So, we always say Adelaide's such a clean city. It's not that clean because of the way we are forced, because of the dry state and the dry continent um, and water things to do it. But now it's all different. We've got the purple water. We can clean, we can make our city sparkle. We don't need to waste Claire's time getting a, 
preparing a plan. We need to speak to the property owners to get them to clean their frontages and we need to clean the street. This is a silly tactic. Thank you. Councillor Moran, would anybody else like to speak to it? Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. The reason why I second it is because there's, there's something in there that I actually really like, and that is um, we all agree that it, that it needs to be further clean. We all agree that the, the street needs attention. We all agree on all of that. But what I do like is a preparing plan for the improve, improvement. We keep hearing everyone say that, you know, things aren't being done there, things aren't being repaired there quick enough. Uh, the, you know, a lot of uh, endless uh, uh, discussion has spoken about the condition of the street. But also, if we want to go back to the opinion pieces of reporters, which is a lot of the, if we talk about that as a general opinion of the public, we actually, you know, it's not only only the cleanliness, but also the visual aspect of the street has, uh, it, it, you know, to, to some of the opinions of others. Um, maybe we need to look at, you know, what Kim William Street is. Maybe we need to give it an identity. Maybe it's lost an identity. Of, I'm not sure, but I like to prepare a plan for improvement. What does that look like? Do we need, maybe we need to discuss that. Maybe we need to have more discussions about that. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that and open to discussing uh, discussing that further. I'm not sure as a seconder if I, you know, if it pleases the councillor, councillor um, Kira, who just keep the first point because we want to increase the frequency of the cleaning. But no, okay, but I do want to actually prepare a, a plan for, for the um, street environment and support the businesses. What do they need? What is it that we have to do out there? What is it? All of that. I mean, I don't. I, I'm. I'm hoping that that's what that captures there. It's. Is that what that captures in that Lord, amendment? Can I ask that? For Lord, Mayor, could I answer that? I am happy to accept okay. the amendment if what if the first point is is re uh, instituted. I'm happy for a plan. No, no, no. Second. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abraham today, and then Councillor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, uh, I think Deputy Lord Mayor touched on something that, um, that um, we're, uh, we're not really paying much attention to, and that is the cleaning is one thing, but the state of public realm is another. And I think it's things like, uh, you know, cracked pavers or pavers that might uh, not be, uh, you know, sitting, sitting flat or might be a hazard, or it might be the number of service pits. You walk up and down King William Street, the number of service pits that are there and, and I'm happy to be guided by administration on this, but my understanding is that um, certain agencies that work under state government legislation or federal government legislation come along to service those, um, you know, whether if it's NBN, whether if it's gas, water, electricity, whatever it might be, they come through and rip up all the nice pavement that's just been put down. And all they have to do is they don't necessarily have to put down the same pavement or, or, or even similar nature. As long as it's not a tripping hazard, it will do. And, uh, and I think that that's what we need to do here. We need to look at what's happening with our public realm and whether if there's a different way to approach that. Whether if there's a way to, to get all those stakeholders, get all the um, um, NBN, SA Power Networks, SA Water, get all those guys around the table and have a bit of a conversation with them. That, that, that's, probably, that's probably something that uh, stands out in my mind. It's not necessarily the, the extra cleaning, that, that's one thing, but the state of public realm and how we go about having the uh, footpaths reinstated, as an example, that's something that needs to be addressed. Acting C, did you want to make a comment? Um, yes, so through the presiding member, um, absolutely reinstatement is a really important part of doing work in the city. And Clinton, would you just like to clarify that, please? Process. Thank you, through the Lord Mayor. Um, just to clarify that point, Councillor, so um, you are correct in that utility companies can uh, come in and undertake essential works on their, their own utilities. Um, that is their asset. Um, they have, they under the Act, they don't have to apply for a permit um, to access their asset. Um, however, we have a pretty good relationship with, their, with those utility companies and they do actually come through our permits team to access the public space. Um, they are required under the Act to reinstate the asset to its previous condition. Um, what the, other, the only um, step in that is that they are allowed to do temporary reinstatements to obviously make it safe 
uh, trafficable for pedestrians, but at some point in time they are required um, under our permit and under the Act to actually reinstate to the previous condition of the asset. So can I ask a question based on that? At some point in time, I mean, I've, I've seen quite a few service pits that are connected to this bitumen channel that's, that's been <laughs> filled. So, um, uh, you know, they, 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 can, they can do that, they can reinstate, or oh, I guess you know, they can fill it up with bitumen and, and walk away and I don't know, not come back to it. Is there a, is there a, I guess, you know, is, is, is that a governance issue in terms of, uh, uh, you know, something that needs to be, well, no, no, you'll, you'll laugh now, but this is, this is, uh, this is what it is. You, you walk down, up and down King William Street and it's filled with bitumen and concrete and anything that's not papers. There's something about it. Why should yeah, I mean, uh, members, members, Councillor Sims, you're next. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I do fear this is um, making a meal of an entree um, here. I think what Councillor Moran has proposed is fairly um, straightforward. And I, I am reminded, um, Lord Mayor, of my experience when I proposed some modest improvements to Hindley Street. Um, and uh, what we got out of that, I think, was a series of workshops um, courtesy of uh, then Deputy Lord Mayor Abiad. And I worry that this may be, you know, I'm just getting that sense, laying the groundwork for another dreaded master plan, rather than perhaps just making some um, modest um, improvements. I can feel the excitement in the room, Lord Mayor, when I, I um, utter those immortal words of um, master plan. They are immortal because we know they take a very, very long time to uh, deliver. Um, but this is a, a, a small, um, modest proposal from Council Moran, something I think we could easily do. I know that the motion is not prescriptive. It simply says increase the frequency. It will be for administration to determine what is required. So my preference would be let's do this. And But I'm open to looking at a broader plan if Councillor Kira wants to move a motion on that in the future. I'd be very open to considering that. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Can I just suggest a small variation, which I think may put some people at ease, um, including extra cleaning, comma, to begin immediately. That is exactly the same as my question. End comma. Isn't it? Well, no, because it's still got the plan for improvement Where stuff. Can, but it still says yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, that's a full, that's a, no, I keep where feasible. Yeah, You're not going to do it where it's not feasible anyway. Okay, I accept that as a variation. So, Councillor Kira, Councillor Moran has just accepted that as a, as a variation. The ship's left the boat, and I'm going to need to address some of the. Uh, oh, sorry, we've already got it underway so. as an amendment, I've just been told. So, yeah, so it's we'll already continue. That's an amendment from So it's a variation from Councillor Hyde on Councillor Kerrison. That's Councillor Kerrison. I'm happy with that. He just accepted it. Um, I just need to check with the seconder that you're happy to accept that as well. Members, do anybody else like to speak to the, what is before you now? Councillor Knoll, yes, you can speak. <coughs> Just a couple of words, and I think, I mean, I can appreciate everybody has the same concern. Okay, that's first. But the thing is that a lot of the conversation has been around homeless people and around all sorts of other ancillary things. And those those issues aren't going to be addressed by the original motion. And they're part of the problem, and we all agree with that. So the question here is, all right, if you're doing this, at least you have got something happening, and that's that's not, and that's that's great, because that may not change, you know, the way King William Street is, because if, if the tiles are shagged, it is, you know, they're not going to get any better. You're just going to try a lot harder to do the same. And obviously, the the, uh, the outcome will show. We'll see if there has been any ability to improve it. But the other thing is, okay, across all of the other issues that this street has. What is it that we're going to do? Because I would rather talk about the broad issue in a, in a motion and saying, with the homeless, this is what, uh, what we can do, you know, with, with the other uh, utilities, etc. this is how we're gonna deal with that, so that there is an, an all encompassing sort of plan that we actually get something done and we have an understanding of how. And if we do it too narrow, then that is only going to, uh, you know, you're only solving a small component, not actually the whole problem. And this. I'll go back to Councillor Kira to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just have to address, there's been some sort of weird 
uh, conspiracies and aspersions coming from that corner that this is all about, oh, this is moving towards a master plan and oh, this must be worked out. Look, for the record, I didn't speak to any other councillors about this amendment. This occurred to me on the spot. And the reason it occurred to me on the spot, the reason it occurred to me. Councillors. And the reason it occurred to me, and the reason I is because I can think of a big councillor, Mark. And secondly, uh, it's because the I read, I actually read the administration comment, uh, which says that presently King William Street is cleaned seven days a week. It's cleaned daily seven days a week. I don't know what council has seen exactly once. I mean, at the moment, it's cleaned between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. because it is a high volume uh, uh, traffic uh, street and there's businesses that are open. So what does councillor want? Uh, seems want? Does he want a pressure hose brought out in the middle of the day and people to be hosed down like, you know, they're uh, rioting or uh, I, I, I'm not really sure exactly what detail is being proposed there. But what I do know is that the uh, existing motion prior to my amendment dictated to the administration that have to increase the frequency of cleaning. That's happening already once a day. It does not actually allow for a sensible approach, which is to say, let's look at the big a picture, let's do the extra cleaning where necessary, and we will get a report and we will be able to follow it up. And if we want and need more cleaning, we'll be able to do it in a sensible and measured way. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. So that now becomes a substantive, and I'll go back to, uh, I'll open to the chamber. If not, I'll go back to the mover. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Ho. Okay. Uh, so that now becomes a substantive. Um, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Moran. Um, so, I mean, by this shenanigans, I'm forced to uh, vote for something that's been done on the fly. Um, I'm grateful that the uh, that Alex Hyde has put in to begin immediately, but left if feasible. I mean, to say that it's already cleaned enough and we need a plan, of course we need a plan. You can put your own motions up. You don't poach other people's and, and decimate them. If you, you think it was dirty, you should have put it up. If you thought the pits were uh, ridiculous, you should have put it up. Councillor If you thought Kerrick. that there's too much bitumen, you should have put it up. It is the height of So, rudeness. Councillor Moran, we're talking, you're summing up on the motion. It is the height of rudeness to then just on the fly to win, so you get your name all over it. Councillor Moran, you're summing up on the motion. We don't need a plan. My, the original motion was far superior. I will vote for this motion because it's better than nothing. Um, it is a, it is, I can't speak lightly enough of it. Just give the instructions to the administration, clean the street more. Is there anybody in this room that thinks that that street is clean enough? No, there is not. All I've said is clean it more often. Now, when Beth Davis Park was here, she often sent the little bus that keeps Rundle Mall sparkling clean and cleans that street. That worked. I'm sure they could work it out without the, the great mind of Jessie Kerr getting up the plan. We know the street's dirty. We can't even get together. We even got Alex to second it. We can't even get together enough to vote that a street that we all agree is filthy is clean more often. We read it twice in the advertiser. This isn't good enough, but it's better than nothing. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, that was, uh, can that be recorded as it was carried unanimously? So uh, that takes us to 17.3. Uh, members, Councillor Hyde, a new home for beach volleyball in the city. Not for a second, I've got Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, only to um, extend my thanks to the administration, particularly Mr. Schubeck, who's uh, worked on this previously. 
uh, for some years and uh, upon requesting further information from the administration as well as Mr McCready, um, that was all forthcoming and it uh, assisted myself uh, and also uh, Volleyball South Australia um, preparing an application for, uh, they prepared the application of course, uh, for the current ORS uh, grant round um, which is out and I uh, wish to also thank the Lord Mayor for providing, for providing a little bit of support for that application. Um, whether we're successful or not uh, lies in the hands of the state government. Um, but uh, if we're not, um, and even if we are, this motion kicks off the process of um, finding them a new home. Uh, it's obvious that it is a much loved asset. It's an asset that wasn't necessarily meant to be where it is and for so long, but uh, people grew accustomed to it there and hopefully we can find a similarly high profile and accessible location within our city's confines uh, where they can still serve their community and, and still pick up ancillary uh, visitors as well. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Members, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a question to the administration. Uh, in respect of Councillor Hyde's second clause, provides in principle approval as landlord for a relocation of volley by volleyball SA to a site within the parklands. My procedural question is, given that we act upon, firstly, the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority, is I appreciate the, the intention, uh, Councillor Hyde, of, of, of your motion, but is that ultra-virus? Um, acting CA. Uh, through the presiding member, I would just take uh, Rudy's advice, but I think it's more, um, the wording more appropriate would be, you know, supports relocation by volleyball. Um, South Australia is already an existing council decision. I have a feeling from last term um, and also Parklands Management Strategy that talks to a preferred location within the Parklands for Volleyball SA. Um, but I'm not sure whether it's ultra-virus, Rudy. Are you able to, Jenny, please help me on that one? Thank you. Yeah, it might be... Um, uh, support is probably a better word than approval. Yeah, it's, it's sort of six, one, half dozen, the other. But it's, oh, it's, no, it's, one, it's one's approval and one's support. No, 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 quite in different. principle. Principle. In principle. But don't don't ruin the ruse, Lord Mayor. The reason that that's actually in there is because um, uh, the grant round guidelines require a fairly strong indication of intent. Um, uh, and that, in absence of an actual site, an actual location, and an actual approval from the council. Uh, we were hopeful uh, would provide the requisite level of uh, intent from us as landlord so that they could say, look, we're, we're pretty trusting that if we give money to this project, it will go somewhere. Okay. Um, and members to that, I have already written to the Minister for Recreation, Sport and Racing to support um, the application for volleyball. So. Okay. Can Councillor Mackey, uh, no, Councillor Sims, sorry. It's Councillor Mackey. Look, um, Lord Mayor, this doesn't sit well with me. Um, I must say, I understand uh, what Councillor Hyde um, says in terms of wanting to um, make a statement of, of intent. But the issue I have is that it doesn't actually specify where in the parklands um, this might be. And the other thing that worries me is it doesn't deal with any of the other issues that uh, front of mind for me when we're talking about a lease in the parklands, and that is, is it publicly accessible? Um, what is the kind of level of fencing and so on going to be? Will it be closed off from the public? Is it going to be permeable? You know, all those sorts of issues that I think are really salient when one is considering um, potential approval for a parkland site. I also think, Lord Mayor, that there's lots of vacant land within the CBD itself, and I don't really like the practice of often saying, well, you know, we need to find space for something, let's automatically put it in the parklands. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not against trying to find a location at all. And I recognise that the, the parklands and the Gladys Elpic um, park may well be the most appropriate place for that. But this resolution is to me like a blank check um, for a um, project to happen on the parklands and that doesn't end very well for this council, Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin. 
Look, I, I have a question um, for the administration. My understanding is that there is a piece of the parklands uh, management strategy that at Park 25 has a small spot on it that says potential site for volleyball SA. So it's already in the parklands strategic management plan. Is that correct? Through the presiding member, yes it is, Councillor Martin. And do I understand that the Lord Mayor has already written to the Minister for Recreation, Sport and Racing seeking funding support for a relocation? That is correct, Councillor Martin. I was approached by Bonneville and say to support their grant application. So um, all of it's, these things... It's not are... specific. In no, the no, grant I understand. Application. Uh, all of these things are already underway and a councillor comes forward with a motion requesting that the things that are underway should happen. The motion was lodged before I wrote the letter, Councillor Martin, because the, oh. the because the grants the timing of the grants been cut off. Okay, okay. Uh, look, I I must say I, I, it is the wrong way to go about it. I mean the, the correct process would be for Volleyball SA in consultation with the administration to put forward a proposal which goes to the Adelaide Parklands Authority and which then comes to council for approval and would be endorsed consistent with the, uh, the Parklands Management Strategy. So how does this work that suddenly we subvert all our processes on the basis of a, a recommendation? That's a rhetorical question. Um, um, I, I think it's deserving of an answer. As you see through the presiding member, we haven't subverted our usual processes. Thank you, Councillor. But hang on, if, Obviously. if we are um, providing in principle approval, then this matter doesn't require the approval of the Parklands Authority. Is that correct? Absolutely not. I would still be wanting to ensure any proposal um, anywhere in the parklands absolutely had input from our Adelaide <coughs> Parklands Management Authority. So an in-principle approval as landlord doesn't actually give um, Adelaide Parklands Authority approval. Well, look, okay. Look, Lord Mayor, I, I, I'm speaking to this, not asking questions, and I'm saying that this is just a, a typical uh, Council of Hyde proposal, one which seeks to circumvent process. There is a process that can be adopted that would be much less intimidating for APLA being told that Council approved in principle this proposal um, on Jan January, whatever the date is today, the 28th. Um, there is a much better way of doing this and it would involve uh, the consideration of all of the issues um, by uh, our staff, uh, working in this area, it would enable then a motion to come forward to council. And look, in in every respect, uh, I would support that. I would support that. It's been in our parklands management strategy for ages. So I just don't understand why we're antagonising uh, Apple by doing this uh, and committing to something. Uh, and we're also requesting uh, that the the minister funds it. Um, it, it, in my view, uh, doesn't provide any opportunity for council to provide assistance. And I frankly think that there ought to be uh, some scope available to Volleyball SA um, to put a case to council to assist in whatever way that uh, we deem appropriate. It's cart and horse stuff again, and uh, I, I'm, I'll, I can't support it. So if I can just ask in terms of, because I'm, I'm uh, also just querying the in principle approval as opposed to support, uh, given it hasn't been through APLA, can I have clarification whether there's problems with that word? Through the Lord Mayor, the way I read is, is that the uh, in principle approval or support relates to a site within the parklands yet to be determined, yet to be uh, brought to council for decision making. Um, why do I come to that um, interpretation? Because of the, the use of the word in principle and then the addition to a site within the parklands. 
a site yet to be determined by council. That's my interpretation of that. Sorry, what was the point? Lord Mayor. Um, I'm just querying the approval, the word approval, given it hasn't been through APLA, um, and that we are just to make sure that we're not in contradiction of any processes. So Rudy's advice is that we're not contradicting any processes that it would normally come through. We're not. We're not. So it would still come back through council with the site to be determined, plans, et cetera, et cetera, and still go through the Park Plans Authority uh, with its recommendation to be consistent with Park Plans Management Strategy. Um, um, just a Martin, question for the question. administration, yes. Um, if the Adelaide Park Land Strategic Management Plan contains the expression of a preference for volleyball SA to be relocated to Park 25, does this motion then open up the possibility of other sites in the parklands in, uh, uh, in uh, contradiction in, of the parklands management? In strategy? reading it isn't specific. It isn't specific about the site. No, no another site. Not a specific I'm site. saying that the motion is not specific in terms of site. It is saying a site. And, and I think that's the question I'm asking. If the strategic management plan has determined the site, doesn't the introduction of a site, not qualified by Park 25, open the possibility of another site? It does. That's exactly in fact, what I'm saying. There may be a, a more preferable site that is, uh, that is discussed because part 25 has been developed since since that point that it was put forward. Councillor Simpson. Thanks, Lord Mayor, a question. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder whether the mover may consider a variation um, and that would be something along the lines of um, provides in principle support for relocation by Volleyball South Australia to a site within the parklands consistent with the Adelaide Parklands Management Strategy. No. The strategy is obsolete. It's it's not because SACA extended their car park. It's no longer big enough to, which is why we need to look at other sites, which is totally the intent that those sites will then come back into us, along with all the other particulars that we need for approval. Final. So it is knocking out Park 25? Not necessarily, but yeah, yes. currently, yeah, yes. currently, no, 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 currently I'm, I'm saying if we gave approval for that site specifically, it may not be feasible. It, it may not be feasible for it to be there. Um, Members, would anybody else like to speak to this? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm, I'm listening to what everyone's saying, but I think we're looking at this too deeply. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still going to come through. It's still going to go through the proper process. We still have to go through the channels in regards to this. I can understand where Councillor Hyde is coming along with this motion and it's there to support um, the, uh, continually having volleyball in our city. Um, but as long as I'm, I feel assured that uh, by administration that uh, this will still see the proper process and, and in doing so I have uh, no problem supporting this motion. Members, if not, we'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Hyde, to sum up. Um, I always appreciate scrutiny, Lord Mayor, and, and yes, this is a typical um, Councillor Hyde motion because it seeks to, to solve the problem. It seeks to solve the problem, and some would say it's a problem of other councillors making, and I do like solving those particular problems, Lord Mayor. I take great delight in solving them um, uh, and seeing a good outcome for both the city uh, and for those uh, stakeholders who call the city home. So I'm very pleased to have to have that branded on this motion. Um, uh, but it, it's quite it's quite clear, Lord Mayor, that things will come back to us for approval. Uh, the reason why the wording is so specific is because it's a statement of intent that we are serious about this. Because if you read the report, you see that these plans were drawn up many years ago. Um, and they're quite good plans. And I'd encourage councillors um, to read them and, and look at the lack of uh, enclosures for, I mean, of course, going to Councillor Sim's point about fences and what have you. Um, Volleyball's often played on the beach. Um, I don't put fences up for that. So uh, I would like to think that there is a way that this can be accommodated in the parklands where we don't need to unnecessarily and permanently alienate um, any space or what have you. Um, and I appreciate, you know, it's not necessarily green space, it will be yellow sand, but it will still be open space. And so I think this is definitely uh, within, very firmly within. Uh, Colonel Light's vision, of course, I don't think beach volleyball exists back then, so it wouldn't have been. <laughs> don't think it did. It wouldn't, would have, but but the, the intent, the intent uh, and the activity and, and, and the recreational value 
is, is firmly within the intent uh, of Colonel Lyons' vision. So uh, this motion is a good motion. Uh, it gives a clear signal uh, to the volleyball community and the beach volleyball community, uh, which includes those city workers that drop in and use it. It says, look, we're committed to finding you somewhere that is still accessible, still accessible by public transport, still accessible by car, importantly, uh, uh, and somewhere that may be able to accommodate a kiosk and what have you, so you can still uh, enjoy the area uh, and, have, and, and, and be confident that it has the amenity as well. So, um, uh, Lord Mayor, this, this will go a long way in solving the problem. And again, uh, I'm, as Councillor Munt said, I'm open to looking at, to looking at potential funding in subsequent financial years, um, uh, either, either alongside, alongside state government funding uh, would, be the, would be the preferred option. And that's, that's actually why to, to answer, if I could just have 20 more seconds. Members. To answer Councillor Martin's point, a letter of support that is attached to a grant application um, is primarily uh, read by the assessing office, officers, um, not necessarily by the minister. And this actually, if that letter hasn't already been sent directly to the minister, um, uh, this actually allows the Lord Mayor to raise the matter directly with Minister Wingard uh, uh, and to talk with, to talk with uh, him about the importance of this, uh, especially reading it alongside uh, record sports, you know, a statewide strategic plan around which codes and which sort of sports require new facilities and, and what have you, which was developed before this was um, uh, publicly and, and, and very clearly on the table. But with the uh, dissolution of this facility would, would present a massive hole in that as well. And so that's something that needs to be brought up independently um, of the grant process as well. So uh, look, I commend this motion. I, I, I hope it receives unanimous support. Um, uh, it's solving a, a very clear community problem, um, uh, one that has been uh, very clearly aerated in the, in the media as well, because that's apparently how we do things around here. So, commended to Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Councillor Hyde. Um, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Division. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerra, Councillor Mackey, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Hart. Um, members, we are doing quite well, but I'm afraid that I need to take a short break. Um, so if we could be back here in 15 minutes, would that suit everybody? 10, 10, 10. 10 minutes? Yeah. 10 minutes? There's a new bar in Beautiful, yeah. lovely. See you back in 10 minutes. Thank
voice training. Um, 17.4, Councillor Sims, Pride Walk on Light Square. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move that the Pride Walk on Light Square be updated to include the State Parliament's removal of the gay panic defence and the passage of legislation to clear the records of people convicted of historic homosexual offences. Right. Okay, Councillor Mackey had his hand up first. Thank you, yeah. Councillor Abrahamson. Okay. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and thanks, um, Councillor Abrahamson and uh, Councillor Mackey. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, members may be um, aware of the, the history of um, the Pride uh, Walk. Um, it was uh, came about as a result of a, a council resolution back in 2015, um, which I moved at the time, and it was part of um, the city's way of recognising the 40-year uh, anniversary at that time of South Australia leading the nation with the decriminalisation of homosexuality. And it had been remarked that we did not have um, in the city of Adelaide a positive emblem that celebrated um, our city's, our state's very proud record of um, LGBTI law reform. And so this concept of the Rainbow Walk was developed, which was a way of uh, recording the advances in uh, LGBTI rights here in our state. And I think we do have a, a proud story to tell when it comes to um, social reform. It was terrific to see council deliver the project in 2016. It was always intended to be at that time a, an evolving project and one that could be amended. Um, and back in 2018, the then Lord Mayor updated it uh, to include the federal parliament's passage of uh, same-sex marriage. And I think it's only fitting, Lord Mayor, that the Rainbow Walk be updated to include these new um, reforms that have occurred last year. And just to speak very briefly about those um, law changes that members may not be aware of, I mentioned before that South Australia was the first state in the country to decriminalise homosexuality, but it was the last state in the country to get rid of the gay panic defence. And the gay panic defence um, allowed the use of a partial defence of provocation uh, in circumstances where um, men were the victims of an unwanted homosexual advance. Um, and so this defence was used, this is the term that's used um, in the case law, the defence was used to um, reduce a sentence, to mitigate a sentence from murder to manslaughter in those circumstances. A deeply um, homophobic law and um, I think very disappointing that South Australia took so long to abolish it. Uh, but I do pay credit to um, the work of the uh, state Liberal government in uh, that regard, um, in particular Vicky Chapman, um, who I think really did push to achieve um, this reform last year and I, I really welcome that. The other um, important change that was made and one that I think is um, also really significant is the passage of legislation to clear the records of people that were convicted of historic homosexual offences. So it used to be um, here in South Australia, as in uh, other states, that, uh, just a, a minute more, Lord Mayor. Thank you. It used to be in South Australia, as in other states, um, that gay men could be uh, convicted of what were referred to as homosexual acts. Um, and those men then had a, a criminal record. Um, which you know has ruinous consequences for people's um, lives. Again, it was terrific to see the Parliament pass legislation to um, clear those records so that those people um, are no longer stigmatised in, um, in that way. So some important things for us to recognise. Um, you'd know, Lord Mayor, it's only a very small cost um, to the council to undertake the work, but I did think it was important to do it through council resolution so that this council could take some ownership of um, making this uh, important update. Um, and also uh, it gets the issue into the community and there may be an opportunity for council to do some sort of event um, as part of the upgrading work as was done with um, the uh, same-sex marriage reform upgrade. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Mackey, did you speak? <clears throat> Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just very, very quickly, um, uh, of, uh, as the second out gay man in the village, um, I'm happy to uh, um, support Councillor Sims' motion. Um, when I think back about 1998, so before my first uh, uh, term on council uh, and 
City Council has a very proud record of supporting Feast Festival, for example. In 1998, I was on the board and we, uh, National Front, I think it was called, uh, a, a right-wing extremist uh, group, in order to try and stop Feast uh, having a pool party at the North Adelaide Aquatic Centre after the public uh, open hours were closed, um, invaded it and pink dye-bombed the pool. Such was the intemperate act that if that were to happen now, I'm sure we would all uh, you know, speak in, in chorus uh, of, of outrage. Um, it, the Pride Walk is, is a lovely piece of public communication um, and um, I encourage you all to support the motion. Thank you. Members? If not, back to the move to sum up. Thanks um, very much, Lord Mayor, and I, I thank um, Councillor Mackey for, um, for his comments. Um, and also, might I say, his long-term uh, advocacy on these issues. Um, I've often I've spoken to Councillor Mackey about this. Um, I remember being a young gay man at university and reading that there was a gay man standing for um, Lord Mayor and thinking, you know, what a wonderful uh, thing to see out gay people in public life. Um, and it is a great thing that we've got two out gay men here in Town Hall. And may there be many more that join the village um, in the months and years uh, to come. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against. That was carried. Can I have that recorded as unanimous, please? Um, item 17.5, uh, we have Creston City of Adelaide, Councillor Mackey. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I move the Council review the current policy on the use of the official coat of arms slash crest of the City of Adelaide by Council members, Council members and update it to limit the use to official Council business and not for political purposes. Following this review, suggested updated wording for the standing orders be considered by Council by the end of March 2021. In the meantime, its use, the use of the crest should only be limited to the conduct of official council business or for council approved and endorsed activities. Uh, second. Members look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Mackey, would you like to speak to it? Um, just very, very briefly, um, Lord Mayor. Um, in the years uh, since uh, the crest was adopted in 1929, uh, to the best of my researches, it has not been affixed to uh, political communication uh, by elected members. Um, and I think that's been a very, very good principle. Doesn't prevent uh, us, obviously, from having the crest on our business card. It doesn't prevent uh, us from uh, using council letterhead to communicate uh, about a specific uh, issue with an individual stake, uh, a ratepayer, resident, um, stakeholder. And um, I think that has served um, the community and the city and the corporation of the city of Adelaide well. Um, I uh, encourage. Uh, fellow members to support the motion. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, you. Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Uh, Sorry. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Lord Mayor, clearly further debate on this matter is required. I think there are a number of members. Hang on, I'm summed up. No, so it's been summed up. Once it's summed up, it's summed up. Um, I did ask, um, sorry, members, can I see that vote again? Can I have hands in favour? And against? No, that, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I'm sorry, that vote has changed each time. Maybe we'll do a third time. Could I take that to the vote? Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. And that is lost. <laughs> members? Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing to all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Yeah, 
Members, we are going to 17.6, Councillor Martin, Heritage Listed Property Insurance. Councillor Martin? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, just finding my place, Lord Mayor. I've got so much City of Adelaide letter here, I keep getting lost. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, look, um, do you need me to have a second? Then? I do. Oh, I'm, right. asking, I'm waiting for you to move your motion. Oh, you want me to move <laughs> it formally? Um, okay. Um, you just have to that say. That council, I'm... noting owners of heritage listed properties in the City of Adelaide, <laughs> are often charged higher rates to ensure buildings because such buildings are listed. Ask the administration to provide a brief report to the March meeting, canvassing options to provide assistance to such rate payers. Thank you, members. I look for a, for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, look, um, I have no illusions um, that um, this will probably end up with a loss that is most of the members, Team Adelaide members, voting Thank you, against Councillor it. Martin, we're not talking about how people are going to vote until the vote. Fair enough. Okay, well, the background to this is that a number of ratepayers in North Adelaide um, some years ago were actively encouraged by Council to list their properties, uh, heritage list their properties as local heritage uh, places. Um, and my recollection is it was almost a door-to-door -door campaign. Council was saying to people, it would be a good idea to list your property. And many people did. Uh, they had bought heritage properties because uh, they liked uh, older buildings with antiquity. And many of them intended to uh, preserve those structures and improve them. Now, over the years, uh, many of these residents have found that securing house insurance, not contents, I'm talking about building insurance, is becoming either difficult to get because some insurers don't want to touch it, or alternatively, the costs of such insurance have increased by hundreds of dollars a year compared to a non-listed property. Now, this motion is loosely worded. I accept that so that the administration can prepare a report for us, canvassing any option it prefers. But I am not suggesting, and I make, I make very clear to every elected member, I am not suggesting that this council in any way finances an insurance premium or a scheme that finances an, an insurance premium. I am not suggesting that at all. Um, what I am asking is that the administration approaches this in an open-minded way, um, has a talk to perhaps the local government association, maybe talk to um, other organisations who've had experience in this. I am aware that some insurers will, for groups uh, of common interests, provide a better and more competitive premium. I'm just asking for the assistance that would direct our ratepayers to a source that would provide more competitive insurance, or particularly, and I know of one case where a ratepayer cannot get building insurance because the property is locally heritage listed and the insurer says it's too much of a risk. So um, uh, either support this or not if you prefer. Um, I say to you, however, this comes from genuine ratepayer concern and it is simply uh, an attempt on my part to ask if the council can do something, anything that would direct our ratepayers to the right location to get the insurance they need or provide advice to them about what they might say to do. Thank you. Councillor Rand, did you wish to speak? I would have Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kerr. Uh, very briefly, I, look, I can't support this. I think it's um, a real can of worms. It presents uh, uh, distortions and uh, all manner of un, um, sort of unforecast problems, one of which is that um, Councillor Martin states he doesn't want to bring forward a, essentially a subsidy for uh, insurance, but that will be the effect of this and it will create a perverse, a perverse incentive. Uh, Lord Mayor, um, I did not say that. I this is just entering the bay. This is entering the bay. Misrepresented. This is entering the bay, Lord Mayor. This is absolutely entering the bay. He's got the right to uh, respond and his allocated time, so he should wait till then. Um, what, what this will do, uh, despite uh, the movers' uh, suggestions that, that this, he doesn't want to create a subsidy scheme for insurance, that, that is exactly what this is. 
That is exactly what this is. Councillor Martin, let him finish. That is exactly what this is. And uh, unfortunately, it, uh, I just think that the, the cons will outweigh, outweigh the pros. Uh, you create a perverse incentive for insurers to increase their, their uh, insurance even further once they know they're getting the subsidy for the insurance. So it just sort of doesn't make sense. I think there are other ways to assist heritage property owners. The heritage incentive scheme is obviously the big one. Um, but this getting involved in, in, I mean, look, buildings have various rates, varying rates of insurance. Insurance, uh, for lots of reasons, lots of categories of buildings with different rates of insurances, um, and I, I'm, I'm very troubled by the by the prospect of um, this kind of uh, distortion. Councillor Abraham, today. Um, just the, uh, a few questions, if I can, Lord Mayor. Um, do we know whether if uh, other councils here in the state offer a similar sort of thing? What sort of thing? Acting things, would you like to no, answer that? Uh, through the presiding member, as you can tell from the very, very, very short admin comment, we actually needed a bit more time to do some research and due diligence, but we'll um, endeavour to do that as part of the report back to um, committee and council in March. Okay, all right, because my other questions were about uh, whether if it was um, uh, state heritage listed or nationally heritage listed, whether if um, uh, yeah, the state government or uh, federal government would provide a similar sort of incentive. So I'll, I'll leave those. Um, through the presiding member, I'm certainly happy to look into that to um, offer it as a comparison um, as part of looking at the heritage listed properties within the city of Adelaide. Thank you. Councillor Sims, I have you on the list. Um, Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Yes, Lord Mayor, in uh, March 2019, I moved a motion in this chamber um, uh, relating broadly to this topic, and it was asking the administration to investigate a uh, heritage incentive rebate, um, which would have gone to holders of heritage uh, properties that maintain their properties. I'm yet to see any update on that. Well, I did wonder if it was in e-news. Um, <laughs> But of course, I did. I did move that, and it's loosely aligned to this topic. And actually, oh. something like that could. But could could we uh, could we have an update? Does that does that sound familiar? Or just get we'll lost ask in the, the acting C. Oh, thank you, members, thank members. you, members, through the presiding member for your helpful comments. Um, if you could just give me a moment, I can certainly check it oh, now well, online. Yeah, um, but, right. um, well, just sit tight to, until yes, then. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, yes. what was the date, councillor? It was March 2019. Yeah. Not sure which meeting. Um, I have the Deputy Lord Mayor then, Councillor Sims. I think we're all advocates for protecting heritage and we want we want to, to support people that actually um, uh, have got heritage homes um, and I, I do support this motion in principle because it's uh, provided a brief report. I just don't know how it would work. It'd be interesting to see how it would all work as a report. I'm a bit intrigued about Councillor Martin telling you the same that um, people with heritage homes find it difficult to get insurance. I mean, I married, manage a lot of properties, heritage homes, and not one of them has the inability to get insurance. And so I would like, to, would like that investigated actually why some homes don't get insurance. It's because the is it more of a financial thing than anything else for the owner of the property? So that becomes a very different conversation. Um, so um, I'm, I'm interested to see a report, uh, anything that we can do to continue supporting the heritage in our um, city is, is really important. I think that's what we, we would all would like. Um, I am a bit sceptical on how to sort of work, but I look forward to a report. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm uh, supportive of um, of this as well. Um, look, I, I note uh, Councillor Kira's concerns, but I, I just highlight through you, Lord Mayor, um, for Councillor Kira's benefit, um, that this is um, simply going to be a, um, a motion looking at um, options to provide assistance to ratepayers. It's certainly not um, suggesting, indeed, Councillor Martin, I think, has made this point on several occasions. It's not suggesting that the City of Adelaide cover the cost of insurance. 
um, or anything like that. But and I don't know what the solution is to the problem that Councillor Martin has identified. That's why I would be interested to look at the report um, so that we can see if there are any options for us to um, offer assistance. So I'd encourage members to um, consider it uh, in that context. It's certainly not suggesting that we move into some level of market distortion, uh, to use you know, a phrase of Councillor Kira's or anything like that. It's simply let's get a um, report and look at what options are available. That seems very sensible when one is um, dealing with an issue like this. Thank you. Um, um, do you have that information, Acting C? Um, through the presiding member, um, yes, I've got the um, decision from uh, March, 12th of March, 2019, um, but my system has frozen thanks to the poorer than average Wi-Fi in this heritage building. Um, uh, so my computer's frozen, so I'm unable to access it, so I missed all that on notice, but I certainly have the... Um, the we will send that through. I will go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, look, let me repeat again. I am not talking about any financial subsidy, any financial assistance to any ratepayer with any heritage property. I speak against that. Uh, and it is only Councillor Kira who seems unable to grasp that. Um, Lord Mayor, what actually happens now is that many of our ratepayers do ring our staff and ask what they do in circumstances where, for example, one ratepayer said to me last week that their insurer was only prepared to insure the building for a sum of money equal to a contemporary structure. That is to say, they weren't prepared to bear the cost of repairing that property in the event of fire and a partial uh, it partially in the property. They could insure it for its value as a contemporary structure. This is a problem among some ratepayers. May I offer Councillor Martin some assistance to show his ratepayer to yes, contact me? Perhaps you can take that. Um, <laughs> maybe not right now. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Martin. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't even hear the interjection. Um, she was offering assistance to your right pilot oh, to look, help. Uh, and uh, I always appreciate the assistance of real estate agents and uh, so would my uh, rate payers. But nevertheless, it is in this circumstance um, that is a rate payer um, uh, having extreme difficulty and another one encountering an absolute brick wall in terms of receiving assistance uh, that some of our rate payers are contacting the council administration and they are unable to help. They are unable to say, company X, company Y, or have you done this, or have you done that? Because it is a matter of individual insurance company positions. All this motion seeks to do is to ask the administration whether formally we can have a look at what actually happens in lo local government areas other than the city of Adelaide, if indeed there is anything that would assist them. If the report comes back and says there is nothing we can do, I accept that. But to not ask the question when ratepayers are actually saying, could you please see if there's a way of assisting me, would seem to me to be a bit bloody minded. So that is all I am asking. If the administration comes back and says, look, there are legal impediments, there are no precedents, then that's acceptable. But we are asking the question on behalf of our ratepayers and they deserve a response, an honest response that says, too hard, can't help, or alternatively, this is the experience somewhere else, it is something we can consider. Thank that you. is all I ask. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, Council members, the division has been called to the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. What is this? Uh, Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, oh, and okay. Councillor Sims. Okay. Members, that takes us to 17.8. Councillor Martin, 88 O'Connor Street. Oh, 17.8. Oh, seven. I've missed one. My apologies. I'll turn back. 
Nice try, I know. 17.7, .7, Councillor Martin, sale of property assets. My apologies. Uh, do you want me to read the motion again as a no, last just, time? No, just if you move the motion and look for a second. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, as we all know, as we all read in uh, the advertiser, um, Council is in a bleak financial position. Uh, we are about to be mired in debt. Uh, and according to the advertiser, um, we are selling assets in a fire sale uh, from a secret point of clarification, Lord Mayor. The words fire sale did not appear in the advertisal well, very, very closely. Um, but Lord Mayor, what was that interjection? Was that a point of order? That was a point of clarification. Point of clarification. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, yes, I think it was in there. No, but look, in any case, it doesn't really matter. Sure that. It's important. It's important to establish uh, in this narrative that there is a perception in the public that we have a substantial debt. Uh, when indeed we were debt free in 2017, um, and uh, in many previous councils, uh, there had been some prudent management that allowed the acquisition of assets, and they included things like car parks. They included other commercial property, um, which has provided a substantial return to council. Uh, in fact, rates constitute, because of the good management of previous councils, because of the superb management of previous councils, rates constitute just half of our general expenditure. About half of everything we spend comes from rates. The rest comes from uh, property, property which generates income. Now, that has been a, a cause of uh, some delight to our ratepayers, um, and equally, it has been a cause of some concern to them that they have read that there is a list of some assets. I can't remember whether it was 29 or 30. Councillor Hyde will remember because he reads uh, the advertiser so studiously. But this list is secret. It is a secret list of assets that may uh, be sold to assist in capital works, which have until now been funded from our operational budgets, but which cannot because uh, we are accumulating uh, debt and overspending by $2 million a month. It is $2 million Sorry, a point month. point of order, Lord Mayor, I think Councillor Martin disregarded our new Treasury policy about the future fund. There's, there's nothing that will go from these sales. Um, potential sales into. That's not a point of order. Sorry, it's it's not a point of order. Clarification. Okay. Clarification. It's a debate. Um, and it's indeed, the, the administration no, tonight. No, no. The administration no, no. tonight has made clear that the sale of one of our assets will be used to go towards selected capital works. That is in our papers tonight. Now, uh, the point of order is invalid. And indeed, so is point our of financial management. Lord Mayor, that sale was approved before the Treasury policy was brought in. Two million dollars a month overspend, rising to three million dollars. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Financial. I think that I think that was a breach of confidence right there, actually. Or a ripper. No, the uh, the loss figures are in the advertiser. Now, Lord Mayor, if you uh, would extend to me the time taken by your colleague. Your former deputy lord, Mayor. I'm happy to extend. Members, if we could actually just uh, hear Councillor Martin out, I think we'll have an extra uh, minute. Thank you. Um, the, look, if you stop interrupting, they won't. Councillor Martin, I can just get continue, through. Continue, please. Um, lord Mayor, um, uh, the ratepayers who've underwritten this council's uh, strong record in asset acquisition, um, who underwrite our activities, deserve to have an explanation of why we've suddenly changed the way in which we approach the management of the organisation. If you are in a position where you derive half, about half of your income from something other than rates, and that is about to change because the sources of those incomes, uh, or that income that is non-rate income, is about to be sold, then I think it would be the height of arrogance to not say to that community, look, we've changed our mind. We're selling off those things which offset rates. We are selling some of those and necessarily, in an honest conversation, if we're selling income producing assets, that's going to mean a loss 
of rate in, uh, a loss of income and an increase in rates. And this is a, uh, about a mature conversation with our electors. That's all I am asking. Um, a few clarifications there, Councillor Martin. First of all, it's our commercial operations, not our uh, supply of property. Um, the commercial operations are actually where we derive our revenue as, as in addition to rates. The other thing, it's not a secret list, it's done in confidence, so all the members are party to those discussions and the strategic property review, which has been happening over a period of three to four years, so that we actually make sure that our assets are working for us. Um, there has been a review of all assets, all property assets and all commercial operations which come into us in confidence because they're commercial in confidence and as we actually make decisions on those properties, they're released to the public. Um, the other thing I'd just like to uh, um, clarify is our debt. Um, everybody has copies, it is public report in terms of our budget, and you'll see very clearly that within the next two years, we're back in surplus. What we have done is in the future years, in years nine and 10 of our budget, we've made provision for some major assets that will need to be renewed, such as the Torrens Weir and the Adelaide Bridge. That is us being very reasonable, very financially prudent in looking at the long-term requirement for our asset maintenance. And so those figures are in there. That doesn't mean that we are going to bear those costs entirely on our own. It simply means that we are aware that those costs will be there in about 10 years' time. The other thing in the long-term financial plan you will see very clearly is the future fund, which is our capacity to sell any assets that is underperforming Forming and replace those with revenue generating assets. And that is, again, a very prudential move by this council to reinvest in assets that will perform in the long term. As you know, today we actually announced that we had the SCAP approval for the Central Market Arcade Redevelopment, which will be called Market Square, and that will be producing revenue up for us for decades to come, as will 88 O'Connell. Um, I am really getting very very tired of the reporting. The other thing that's been done in the reports, and I don't know if people just don't understand finances or not, yeah. is the cumulative debt of 100 million. It's not. If you end the financial year with an operating deficit of 20 million, you start the next year with that operating deficit and you trade through. Now, at the end of that year, if it's 30 million, yes, you've gone up by 10 million, but your, your operating deficit is only 10, 30 million. It's not 50, it's not cumulative, etc., etc. So at the moment, we know because of COVID and the, some of the hits that we've had and some of the things that we've choose to continue to operate, such as the Aquatic Centre, which will make a loss of around 2.8 million, that we will have an operating deficit of 39 million at the end of this year. That is in our financial reports. And we actually have to just understand that this might be one off and you look at the future in our financials and in our long-term financial budget, and that will be clarified. I am going to ask the acting see if you, if you would like to add anything to that, but I am actually getting very, very tired of us being told as a council that we are not doing our job, we are doing our job, and uh, we have also making sure that we can actually get back into the black within two years. I move the Lord Mayor has another minute to debate. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm actually stating fact, which we all have and it's public reports. Um, no, we don't want to give you the administration in the debate, sorry. Sorry, uh -huh. Councillor Sims. Oh, I'm very Thank you. Councillor Moran. Well, I'm sorry, your facts differ dramatically from my facts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yours are uh, fake facts indeed. In 2017, we were debt free. We decided to buy the La Corne site, a ridiculous mistake. We decided to develop the market arcade. I actually moved the motion that said we uh, we roll the market, Adelaide market, into the arcade and we sell the air rights and whatever we get from the air rights, we spend on the market. That turned into some monstrous, <laughs> monstrous scheme that we won't be seeing rates back from a long time for a long time. This council and the previous council have driven this. Alex is right, a lot of the blame does last with the last council, but they weren't votes of the people that survived the last election. It wasn't me, it wasn't Phil. Um, it was, however, the Lord Mayor. You have, the last two councils have Councillor run Councillor Moran, point of order, that is absolutely incorrect. What? What's incorrect? 
it wasn't you and it wasn't Phil, but it was me. Yeah, um, you sorry, were part of Team Adelaide. So there we, was no we Team can't, Adelaide. We can't in, have done anything in the me, last. We had the minority faction. We never got our vote up. So we were a silent voice on the last council. This point of order, Councillor Moran. That was a decision of the council, as all decisions are decisions of this council. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is the majority faction that shoulders the blame for the poor decisions of the last council. This council is indeed reaping that bitter harvest of what happened to the last council. But do not blame everybody that sits in this chamber from the last council. That is not true. Bad decisions were made and they got us into a lot of debt. Victoria Square, disaster. We didn't follow the writing instructions left by the architect to start with stage one. We started with stage three. We've made some shocking decisions and now this is the bitter harvest. But don't say that we're in a good state, Lord Mayor. We're in a, pa a parlous state. We are, in, we are, are doing fire sale. Phil's motion doesn't mention any of the stuff that the Lord Mayor just entered the debate into. He just wants the list that has been considered to be sold to be made public to the people who own it, the ratepayers of Adelaide. They would probably like to see which properties we're considering selling. A lot of them I'll agree with. Uh, I agree with the... the uh, Councillor Moran, beach be pay, careful, they are in thing. confidence. Um, that was one that we have said in public. Correct. Um, and I believe a car park. I, I agree with a lot of them. But this, this rubbish about this council's doing so well, we're in massive debt. We're selling off the farm. We have to. I agree with a lot of them. We have to sell this stuff because we're in such a shocking state. But all this wah, 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 that we're doing, it, we're doing it really well, we're not. And it's nothing to do with the coronavirus. We're in massive debt before that. We have run this council into a ditch. And don't look at me and Phil. We didn't. Deputy Lord Mayor. May I remind Councillor Moran that it was actually her motion, well, second, she second a motion in which she obtained funds from the uh, state government to buy the Lookapoint new site. So, may, um, I, may I correct that? I voted to accept the 10 million. I did not vote for the 10 million. You voted actually, to accept um, the 10 million. Actually, um, as, as a point of, point, just, I just want point of order. Just want to just want to bring that uh, back to her memory because she seems to have forgotten that. Um, that, that I think um, I think Lord Mayor, I think we we've got to just look at what this motion is, and I'm not going to divert to discussions other than what what uh, Councillor Martin has presented here today. And um, it's obvious that he doesn't understand a lot of things, and he doesn't understand what we're doing. And I think he might need to have a lot more Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor, we're talking, talking to the motion. I'm very sorry, but it just seems that he's just a little bit muddled. So it, it you know we, we've been very clear to say that we're identifying these assets. We've identified them. We didn't say that we're selling every single one of them right now, not next year, tomorrow, whatever. We we have identified the assets. We have discussed these assets. We've discussed them at length. It's be irresponsible of us if we do not do that. It will be irresponsible of us if we don't look towards the future. It will be irresponsible of us as a council that we don't talk and collaborate and discuss things in regards to the future of this council for our ratepayers. That is what we are here to do. We are not here to create divisions. We are not here to put ourselves on accolades. We are here to do a job and we are doing it. And we are doing it in the best of the capacity that we can in this current environment that we're in. And it's called a pandemic, let me just remind you. Oh, oh. And there are a lot of people that are suffering in oh. and across the world. Deputy in Lord Mayor, I need you to speak to the motion before us. Ourselves for the future, which goes back to saying preparing for future funds. My God, easy words that we can remember. You know, it, it, it's very clear what we are doing here. You can twist it, you can turn it, you can call the advertiser and sensationalise the story and call them fire sales, get the headlines out, get, get it out there and, and create a chaos. But the truth of the matter is, is that we are working towards the future and we're doing a damn good job of it. And thank you to the administration. <laughs> thank you to our Lord Mayor for leading this because we are facing a lot of obstacles from past decisions, 
that we did not see that the pandemic was going to happen. Oh. Rondon Wall, if we did not fix Rondon Wall with those old pavers that were there before, we'll be sitting here crying, going, oh my God, look at that. We haven't been fixing Rondon Wall. It's so dirty. Oh my God. <laughs> Deputy that, Lord Mayor, I need you to talk to the we'll motion. We'll be going, oh my God, we've got nothing pretty. Deputy in Lord Mayor, Come last, on, last get time. On with it. It's called progress. It's called the future. If we didn't do this, you will be saying, your rate payers will be looking at you and saying, why are you leaving our cities behind? We did those projects for a reason. They were a decision for a reason that you were part of. I don't want to get into, into all of that. The public are now loving Rondon Mall. They are loving what we have done. So let's just move forward. Let's work towards something. Let's stop creating a division in this council with your stupid team. Uh, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, that's sorry, enough. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I've had Sit enough down. myself. Thank you. It's about time to rule us. You call just oh, you right. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I might um, just bring us back to the motion um, before us rather than um, other issues. For me, this is a, a very um, important democratic principle that um, Councillor Martin is addressing with this motion. And that is the principle of who gets access to information within a democracy and the level of engagement by elected representatives with the people that they purport to represent. And I totally understand the concept of uh, commercial incompetence. I understand that's a very important um, principle. However, I do also think it is important in a democracy that if discussions are taking place around um, assets that are owned by the community in common, that the community should be consulted and should be engaged with. Um, when those discussions are happening. Um, and I don't think it's unreasonable to say, well, if those discussions are indeed taking place, then that information should be made available to the community so that they have an opportunity to engage in the discussion. That's an important democratic principle for me, and it's on that basis that I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Councillor Hyde. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, bring it back to the motion, but I'll just reflect on Councillor Sims' point, community. See, they don't really realise it, but I mean, Councillor Sims talks about the community and what have you, and Councillors Martin and Moran talk about the rate payers. Um, they're, actually, they're actually sort of two different things. Uh, and, and so when they team up on this, it doesn't actually make sense. Um, because the ratepayers expect a financial return. They invest money into the city, well, they rather, they, we levy taxes upon them. Um, expect a financial return, which is actually around, which is actually precisely what our strategic property review is about. The community uh, is an all encompassing, more broad term, and, and often the people that are encompassed in that term, uh, while they bring much value to the city, economically and financially, they're not necessarily as included. But I just wanted to highlight and differentiate that point there. But, but when we come to it, um, because, because to be honest, if I went up to Joe Blow on the street and said, oh, here's a list of 30 things, what do you reckon I should do with it? He's not going to give me any any real substantive or important feedback. By and large, that will inform, oh, that, will inform oh, that will inform, that will inform, that will inform the financial Right, that will inform the financial yeah. performance yeah. of that exactly asset. What I that will inform the financial performance of that asset. But if I could just come to the crux of my argument, Lord Mayor, which is, um, uh, which is actually that by voting for this, and if this is successful, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, and Councillor Sims, as they've indicated, they will vote for it, are actually going to be unduly enriching wealthy developers, possibly foreign-owned corporations that have their eyes on what we're doing by releasing this list and potentially the values that we expect to get for these properties alongside it, they're actually revealing our hand. They are revealing our hand to all those people who are wealthy enough uh, to take an interest in some of these sites that we're talking about. Um, uh, and in doing so, they seriously disadvantage our negotiating position. They seriously disadvantage our negotiating position. Because people will see exactly what's on offer and developers, mark my words, developers, including foreign owned corporations, will start coming in and looking up and seeing how they might divide the empire and carve it up for their financial gain. We here, on the other hand, are responsible for ensuring that our assets perform. 
And you know well, Lord Mayor, as do I, and the reason I think there's so much passion from these addresses is because uh, you know, we are some of the people that are looking at this on a daily basis um, and working to understand the issue where previous councils um, clearly didn't. The financial return, the performance of these assets is woeful. If we were an ASX listed company, go back 15 years even, if we were an ASX listed company and we got audited, we'd all be in the clink as directors. Well, actually, sorry, Councillor Moran would be in the clink. I've got two minutes, please, Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran would be in the clink because the performance of those assets is disgraceful. Lord Mayor. Uh, sorry, alongside the rest of them. Lord alongside Mayor. the rest of them. Lord Mayor. But, 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 Lord, Lord Mayor. Councillor, I, I, yes, I, Councillor Moran, you're interrupting. You just told me that I should go to prison. No, I didn't say that. Talking about, I said, he looking was referring at our books. to a, he was referring to a council said, of 15 years ago. If, if we were going to, Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, he was talking about a councillor fifteen years ago. He said Anne Moran should be. No, that's not what he said. But the, the, the point is, Lord Mayor, I'm applying a commercial lens, which is something you know not many have done in this chamber clearly over the past over the past okay. decade. A commercial lens to our assets. And Councillor Martin is coming in here as a rabble rouser. Councilor, He's seeking to rouse rabble as please. usual. As usual. Uh, nothing about the beach volleyball community, but we'll, we'll, we'll rabble, we'll rabble rouse. Um, Lord Mayor, and in doing so, the collateral damage of that will be our financial position, our negotiating position, and ultimately the return that we can deliver to our ratepayers who expect us to be competent financial managers. And it's the incompetent financial management, clearly, of many years gone past that has meant that council did not have a sinking fund to cover uh, the many tens of millions to replace the bridge. A bridge that's 100 years old, Lord Mayor. Blind Freddie could have seen that coming. Same with the Weir. Same with the Grenfell Curry bus corridor. All of these things which previous councils have not planned for. In the meantime, while they haven't planned for that, they've let a very important strategic assets owned by the ratepayers, by the corporation, sit there completely underutilised, wasting away, delivering no return to us, delivering no return to the people who purportedly they are meant to serve. It's all that is what we're fixing. That is what we're fixing. Councillor Hyde, your time is up. Thank you. Members, thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. Uh, first and foremost, the, the motion here starts with noting media reports claiming. Are we here to speculate what is in the media or are we here to listen to the subject matter experts who are providing us with proper facts and information? Noting media reports claiming. That's, that's point number one. Point number two, I think uh, Councillor Hyde touched on this a fair bit, so I just want to remind members, and this is in our point one of um, administration's comments which is essentially getting value for money for ratepayers. We're here to represent ratepayers. We want value for money for our ratepayers. That's that, that's, that's that, right? And the, my final point, Lord Mayor, comes down to, comes down to uh, uh, what Councillor Sims mentioned about the community and, and how we, uh, I guess to a degree, we, we go out and we, we uh, get funds from our, uh, from our ratepayers. We hit them with rates, they pay up, and if it's all about the community, then if I can put this out there, we pay taxes all the time. Does the state government or the federal government come knocking on our door and say, hey, what do you want me to do with this public asset? Hey, what do you want me to do with this? No, they don't. They actually finalise their budgets behind closed doors. We don't get we don't get to see the budget at all until it's revealed by the treasurer. Whereas here, we at least engage with our uh, ratepayers and our community. We get them to come in. We get them to, to come and comment on our budget. So if we're talking about uh, uh, transparency and sharing our, um, our our budget and expenses with our ratepayers and community, I think we'll do a, um, a very good job of that. Thank you. Members, if not, go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm just delighted that uh, Councillor Kuros thinks that things are great, that uh, uh, humble Hyde over there thinks things are great, and Councillor Abraham said that thinks things are great. Uh, and I am sure our ratepayers will not be convinced. Two million dollars a week overspending. Right now, well, no, actually, it's three million dollars a week, uh, a month, I beg your pardon, three million dollars a month. Our, our average doubt 
$39 million, and it will go higher than that, by the way, $39 million expected overspend this financial year on top of pre-COVID debt, much, much more debt, pre-COVID. COVID is just an excuse, a convenient blame game. It is about financial competence and financial management. And if this council is incompetent, and I argued uh, that the majority team Adelaide approach is incompetent. Councillor Martin, would you like to withdraw that remark? No, I wouldn't. Team Adelaide is what you called yourself. I, your team Adelaide, uh, is there a problem? Please continue without well, using derogatory statements. That's Thank not you. a derogatory statement. And Lord Mayor, may I just say to you that as Section 29 of Standing Orders says clearly a member of council, that's you, or a council committee must not, while at a meeting, cause an interruption or interrupt another member who is speaking. Now, I say that to you as a courtesy. As the presiding member. That, that, is, that is standing orders. If you believe I'm behaving improperly, please tell me. That is your obligation. Am I behaving improperly by referring to Team Adelaide? I have asked you before not to use that constantly, as I believe that is disrespectful to the people in the chamber. If you want to speak to a councillor by name, that would be great. Lord Mayor, when there is a the faction. Same respect and there is a the same faction respect in this room called the Team Adelaide. They call them Councillor Martin, could you please sum up on your motion? Lord Mayor, uh, look, all I am asking is that instead of, instead of arrogantly uh, thumbing their noses at the ratepayers of this city who rely on the financial management skills of this organisation to make sure that the rate burden is not great, is no greater than it is now, there is an obligation to share the information about how you're selling off the farm, which assets are targeted, allow them to comment in a meaningful way. There may be, among that list of 29, 30 or whatever it is assets, there may be assets people would prefer that we kept. There may be others that they would be happy to see to go. But no one is advantaged by people in this chamber saying there's no problem, or as Councillor Hyde recently said in an email, this is the best managed council we've ever had. There is no point in doing that and hiding the truth from people. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is lost. Yes. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran and Councillor Seamus. Thank you, members. We've got two more items on the agenda tonight. So we've got 17.8, ADO O'Connell, Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor. Um, you wish me to read the motion? No, just to move the motion and look for a seconder. Okay. Um, I uh, seek a seconder for... Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, look, um, I understand uh, that this will uh, probably go down on factional lines, as the last item did. Um, I, well, uh, Lord Mayor, I haven't used the word Team Adelaide. You asked me not to use Team Adelaide. I thought I'll leave it alone this time. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, I am simply asking again for transparency. Um, uh, when you announced uh, with uh, Commercial and General the uh, 88 O'Connell development, you told the media, and I stood beside them, uh, uh, about the extent of research that had been conducted prior to approving this project, about the extensive studies that had been taken in regard to overshadowing. Uh, this was reported in the advertiser. And not surprisingly, people living around the development contacted me and said, if you have all of this information about overshadowing, could we please see it? We are worried about our residences. We don't know whether we need to move, whether we'll be impacted adversely by the development or otherwise. And my intention is to simply provide them with the information. The information may not hurt them. It may in fact be good news for them. 
but uh, we have alerted to the community. You did at a press conference subsequently reported in, in the advertiser. We have alerted them that we have very detailed studies about the movement of the sun and how it affects shadowing over nearby properties. Um, given that you have already set the hair running, given that you have already told them the information is available, it seems to me, contrary to the administration advice, that it would be a reasonable thing to be sufficiently transparent to say to our residential ratepayers, here it is. Um, it asks nothing more, nothing less. I'm not asking for information related to the structure. I'm not asking for information about um, uh, environmental outputs or inputs or the nature of the development. Simply asking that the information that you have already identified is in possession of council be made available to those who feel that they're entitled to it. Councillor Moran? Uh, I'll move the motion to be put. Uh, I'll, need a, I'll need a second though for that. Oh, she second the original motion. I'm sorry. So someone else needs to motion, do that. It's going to go down the lines. So, Councillor Moran, are you speaking to this or not as a seconder? Okay, well, there's no point speaking to this or the next rubbishy motion either, because while you don't like being called a faction, you all vote together. So, Council there's no point in, in us being Moran. here. Councillor Moran, that's not speaking to the motion. Um, Councillor, sorry, Councillor Hyde, are you speaking? Uh, I'm just asking a question. Um, the wording of the uh, the wording of the motion immediately publish any reports or documents which, which provide calculations related to reading that with the administration then surmise that because uh, I recall what we received and there was substantial information in there there was also a lot of other information um, which it would not make sense to release um, uh, but but this, this says immediately publish any reports or documents which provide calculations related to. Does that then mean if we received a report this thick and the overshadowing was this much? I mean, I read that to say you have to put it all out there. Is that, no, is that no, the interpretation? No. But, that, but that's... I'll that's, ask the administration on the interpretation sort of, what of what's being requested. Um, through the presiding um, member, so any report or document currently held in administrative possession that has anything in relation to overshadowing associated with that development would, if this motion is successful, be released. But if it was part of a document, part of a larger document, which would release the part thereof or the whole document? Because I say a report is the whole thing. That's how I would interpret it. That's any report or document containing yeah. um, any mention or diagrams or okay. uh, modelling in relation to overshadowing, um, my um, sense would be that we would release the full report. Um, well, given document. that, I'll just, I'll just make a couple of quick comments, which is that I obviously can't support the release of uh, a huge volume of information, which is uh, still uh, you know, going, going to SCAP and is yet un as yet unfinalised. Um, and what have you, there will be lots of commercial and confidence details in there. No. However, however, I would like to propose an amendment, if I may. Um, and I'm just wording it in my mind, but I think it would be of far greater value if our staff actually worked directly with those who may be affected by overshadowing. It's not our development, it's it's the development commercial engineer. But at least to walk them through it, we able to Well, do that, we, so. we will be having forums for the public to talk through all the design. Uh, I don't care about forums, I'm interested in the people who have, or may have a... That's not us. Uh, through to Bizardi member, um, I understand, well, sorry, we haven't quite let you finish. Um, but I'm assuming what you're hoping to do is um, and, um, have our staff, i.e. Tom and his team, um, work closely with those in the surround, surrounding ATH O'Connell to have to a look at what. Um, then we'd no, need to. But, they, I wouldn't want but the, the design is, isn't finished yet, and I 
um, would encourage council members um, to perhaps wait until um, something actually gets lodged. We can certainly share what the current um, development plan requirements are, noting that planning code is changing um, at the moment as well. So in terms of what's acceptable for that site, I think that might be helpful for the community to understand. But obviously it's all subject to much more detailed design and it's all subject to SCAP and it's all subject to um, the developer as well. So you're saying if we release these, it it may be so far off the mark as to be irrelevant. Potentially, yes. Right. Well, just, well, we'll just we'll have to bring it later, Phil. Yeah. So I've got Councillor Sims next. Okay. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry, Lord Mayor. I just I have to speak to it because um, I think the ratepayers are going to get a bit confused. I understand where Councillor Martin is coming from, and he would like to give the ratepayers and the people of North Adelaide reassurance uh, on what uh, is happening there. But I think we have to be very mindful at the moment that we're still going through a process. And I want to bring bring point one. I think we've got. Uh, can I read out the recommendation on point one, or, or, or everyone's very clear in regards why we can't and we are unable to provide details related to this design and the process beyond which has been publicly released. And the parties have entered into a formal uh, contract and these details are protected by the mechanism of the contract and are currently deemed as confidential. We have to be mindful of that and we have to understand this process that we're going through at the moment. Also, we, are, we have been elected uh, as councillors and we have been elected to make decisions and we were elected through many committee meetings regarding this project. And we have talked about many things in regards to this, including the subject matter in regards to this motion. So it, we, I would say the people that elected, you would have to trust you in the decisions that you have made. And I understand that we will have a forum and we'll speak about this in detail, but we are going through a process. And I do not want anyone to think that I am gonna vote against this, but it's got nothing to do that I do not want anyone to have the information, but we have to go through this in order to ensure that we have commercial um, viability. Uh, Councillor Sims. You I move the motion be put. I look for a seconder that the motion be put. Councillor Ho. Members to the vote. Those that vote that goes the motion be put, raise your hand. That's carried. So decision on the motion. Members, those in favour? Those against? Division. Division. Sorry, I didn't see all hands either. So those in favour? I know they do. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. Members, that takes us to uh, item 17.9, Adelaide Central Market Foundational Documents. Councillor Hyde. I'll seek a second. Okay. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Knoll. Um, on this particular item, I have an actual conflict of interest, but I will remain for the, uh, for the discussion, but will not vote here. Thank you. You need to state what your conflict of interest is. And it is because I'm a, a trader in the, in the central market. Thank you very much. Um, I have a seconder in Deputy Lord Mayor. So, Councillor Hyde, if you wish to speak to him. Um, so, he's remunerated as well as Sorry. Rudy, would you like to discuss <laughs> the. We have actually been through this. Thank you, Councillor. But uh, through the Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin, if I can just confirm that whether your question is whether uh, Councillor Hyde is conflicted for reason being of being a member of the board of the Central Market Authority. A remunerated. A remunerated, yep. There is an ordinary exemption at play uh, under the legislation where conflicts of interest don't play when the matter has been discussed at board level prior to this matter coming to council for decision. Lord Mayor, may I ask then, is this matter coming to us through the board of the Adelaide Central Market Authority as a consequence of what was just explained to me? That is, the board has discussed this matter and it is now coming to council. Is that correct? Um, if I ask the board member, this has been presented to the board? Line by line, we went through it. Thank yes. you. So the answer to that is yes. Uh, members, so Councillor Hyde. Yes, 
Um, so, uh, obviously, we're at a stage where uh, the charter for the Adelaide Central Market is, is woefully inadequate as a document, um, but there are also other foundational documents uh, that need to be resolved and they're listed here um, in the motion. Uh, my board uh, has been through this uh, line by line. Um, uh, this motion has the support of the board and the support of the chair. Um, uh, we've drafted it rather rather uh, studiously and it covers all the aspects that we think need to be covered but it is just an enabling motion uh, it is a motion which is uh, giving the administration some parameters um, within which they can work before and this will come back to council at least a few times before it comes back to us or at least a couple of times we'll come up for discussion uh, and, until a decision can be made. So this is actually just getting the ball rolling and, and to fill members in um, from the discussion at the authorities board level. Um, uh, we, we feel that it's a bit of a chicken or egg <clears throat> situation here whereby um, who sort of makes the decision and at what point do we decide that uh, it would make sense for the authority to also be the least a leasing agent for the arcade as well. Um, how will the authority operate? How is, it, how is the arcade development next to it going to change the nature of, of how the authority operates in an operational sense? Of course, the arcade will not uh, uh, have, make any changes to the operation of the market floor necessarily and how the traders go about their business to be the same loved central market. But uh, how can we best work uh, with the new arcade and how can we make sure the precinct thrives overall of course a thriving precinct it needs to be underpinned by the right foundational documents now from the board's perspective um, uh, queries uh, before before the admin comment was drafted um, led us to understand that a rather uh, woefully inadequate um, uh, revised charter um, which was a bit piecemeal um, would come into council for approval anywhere between January and, uh, and March. Um, we felt that it only addressed uh, part, well actually didn't address any of the principles that we've outlined um, and it wouldn't have been fit for purpose either and so uh, this is the opportunity for us uh, with the um, uh, advice and, and the workings through from the Central Market Board uh, to come together and say, look, we agree broadly on some principles. There is plenty more finer detail to be worked out. However, um, uh, we're ready to start doing this. We're ready to start doing the hard work and seeing exactly how the precinct should be shaped regarding the arcade redevelopment and the and, and the market itself. And that's really important um, uh, because we're about to redo our strategic plan. And it, but it's not just important for that. It's important for our traders to have certainty um, around what we as an authority are working towards um, and what and what the work that we will be doing is. And if I could just have one more minute, Lord. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, and so I, I apologise in advance for it's probably one of the longer motions that's come to council um, from an elected member, but it's, a, it's an incredibly important topic and built into this motion as well um, is something that we thought uh, the previous approach uh, by the administration would not really cater for. We didn't see room in there for it, especially a tight timeline, um, which was consultation. Consultation um, uh, is absolutely key to getting this right, and that's consultation with the board, but importantly, consultation with the traders as well, um, uh, because the foundation, foundational documents will outline how the traders will be involved and, and the ability that they will have uh, to be involved in the management of the market as well. Um, and you'll see that's one of the principles outlined here, but it also seeks to rectify a lot of issues that have uh, 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 been in play in the market for a long time, being infrastructure, who funds infrastructure, where does it sit on a balance sheet, how does it sit there, who's quantifying it, um, uh, and also uh, firmly outlines, probably for the first time ever, that the car park is actually there to support the market um, uh, and to in, in ensure that we get further retail trade. So um, those are the principles. Uh, I'm happy to have discussions offline with members um, uh, if they wish, but I commend, I commend, I commend the motion. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I move that this matter be referred to a workshop um, with uh, including a presentation from the Chair of um, the Central Market Authority. And you're looking for a seconder? Yes, please. So, Councillor Mackey. 
Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I've um, listened to uh, what Councillor Hyde um, has said very uh, intently. I think we're all interested in um, the central market and the important work that it does. I note um, he has uh, stated that this is a proposal that's coming from the board um, of the Central Market Authority. With that in mind, I think it's important that we get a presentation from the chair directly. Um, it's been good to hear the explanation from um, Councillor Hyde, but I would also like to hear it directly from um, the chair. And I think a workshop is the uh, best environment to be able to work through these issues and then to potentially revisit it as a resolution of council down the track. But first, we need to, um, to, to use your phrase, I think, Lord Mayor, have a deep dive um, into this and to get a bit more information, I think, before we make decisions tonight. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I wonder if uh, Councillor Sims might consider just a, a minor uh, tweak of this, that the, that the matter be deferred pending a workshop, including a presentation yes. from the Chair. So if the matter is deferred pending a workshop, that means that the motion stays until the workshop is held, correct? Is that what you're after? Yeah. Pending a um, workshop? If I... So, yes? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. If, if I may briefly speak to it, um, uh, as with as with Councillor Sims, and I'm sure also with um, Councillor Hyde, um, we are all very committed to the success, sustainability, and sustainability of the Adelaide Central Market. Um, in my six seven months on council this term, I we, we're briefed and workshopped uh, about all manner of things. And this is a very substantial item, and as, as Councillor Hyde's acknowledged, it's one of the longer motions. Um, uh, and the administration has commented that, in fact, that the, the work is underway. Um, but varying charters, uh, and, and I'm sure the intent and the, the, of, the, of the Board of ACMA is sound, uh, but varying charters is a substantial matter. And we deserve the respect of being uh, of this being workshopped, and so I encourage. Uh, and I, I have, by the way, Lord Mayor, um, contacted uh, the chair of ACMA, uh, Mr. Morris, and he's perfectly comfortable uh, with this matter being deferred pending a workshop. He understands that this is quite a significant body of change. Members, to be Lord Mayor, sorry, would this be matter be? brought forward for council consideration once the document's been put together? Uh, so these changes be put into the, the the document, would that be brought into council again for us to consider? Yeah, so through the presiding member, you'll see in our admin comment, we're working towards a workshop um, with committee for the 16th of February with a view to bring through um, pending feedback um, revisions to the Charter for Council consideration. So the intent was to workshop and then bring a report through. Right, so the these course. items in here can be put into the document if it's uh, successfully voted and then we'll, if we put, we'll have a workshop on it anyway, correct? No. What you're doing is adding another workshop into the meeting. Oh yeah, but I'm saying we're going to have a workshop on this anyway. Precisely. So I yes. will have a workshop on this, yes. which you don't have an issue with, instead of having a workshop to work out what you're going to do with the subsequent is workshop. Still That's what I'm sorry. I'm just trying to understand the process. I'm sorry. I'm just delaying it. If you can ask the I'm question, so I'm trying to understand the process. Mm -hmm. So we have, if this gets through, this gets put into the document. At the workshop that we have pending. No, this is deferred. Is that deferring? So, deferred. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The, the amendment. Right. Okay. Right. Sorry. So, are we all clear? So, yeah. this is that the the matter, the motion is deferred until we have the workshop, and then the motion will come back in after the workshop. If the motion is carried, then we go to a workshop to look at the review of those documents. Um, Councillor Hyde, is that a question or are you looking to speak actually? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking to speak, Lord Mayor. Um, this is analysis paralysis. Um, honestly, honestly, this is analysis. We, 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 we're going to defer it so that we can have a workshop, so we can talk about our feelings. So we can talk about our feelings and hear from 
you know, faff about, say, oh, what do you want the market to look like? Oh, I think it should look like this. No, the board, the experts, which has a trader on there, have already given you their feedback in the form of this motion. And the reason we brought the motion here to answer um, Councillor Mackey is because we saw the support from the administration. And I, you know, I hate to, you know, put the flames under then, the feet, but then was, don't. <laughs> was awful. There was no support. The homework, the dog ate the homework. You know, the, the, that, that, that is actually that is actually the state our charter was in. And if that charter came through, came through to this chamber for approval, you would see precisely right. why the board leaving. was incredibly concerned yes. with the state of it. So um, we don't need to have a workshop so that we can then have another workshop. Um, what we need to do is uh, is we need to, and I'm very happy, very happy for the board to present um, uh, you know, to, to a workshop which is discussing this, but again, it's the chicken and egg argument. You know, at what point are we going to decide what we need to do? I'm saying time is running out. You need to at least signal your intent now. Remember, this is the motion, the original motion is not getting you to make a decision. There are plenty more bites of this cherry that will happen along the way. For the central market, these, this is integral. It has been dragging on for seven years, 2014. And I know Councillor Mackey's only sort of fresh back in here, but in that time, the only other councillor who's expressed an interest in the Charter, other than the Lord Mayor, is, is Councillor Noel. So, you know, but now suddenly we care so much about the market and we want to go over everything with a fine tooth comb. That's malarkey. That is malarkey, Lord Mayor. This is this is just an attempt to frustrate a bona fide motion that's been endorsed by a subsidiary of the council that is only looking to get things done and get the ball rolling. Time is running out. We have board appointments expiring. We have things that we urgently need to look at. Um, uh, the, the, too much time has been wasted on this topic previously. I say, uh, because you'll get many more chances to look into this and do your deep dive per the um, uh, February workshop, which is outlined on there, um, tell the administration to go and do some preliminary work. They're only principles. I haven't redrafted the charter here and given it to you. They're principles. Say that you endorse the principles and see what happens and we can waste a little less time. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, Acting CE, you want to make a comment? Um, yes, through the presiding member, just to be clear um, to all council members, um, this review has been underway um, for a period of time. We have worked really closely with the new board. It was always um, our intention that once the board was in place, to then work alongside that board and the new chair to revise the charter, and that work has been underway for a period of time. There is now a governance subcommittee of the Adelaide Central Market Authority, um, and one of the board members heads that up, and that's been um, certainly helpful in terms of understanding what type of changes to the charter, um, you know, what those changes need to be. And we've obviously worked closely with the chair. We do have a draft charter that has been distributed um, to the board, um, and um, some of that is is back here um, tonight. Um, perhaps it, um, through the workshop, um, not everything that um, that the board may or may not wish to see in that charter will necessarily, from an administrative perspective, um, be recommended by us. So I do think it's important um, that we have the workshop so that we can certainly um, check with council members um, how you wish to proceed in terms of revising that charter. Um, I have Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, look, um, it is um, at the end of the evening uh, and I will uh, be brief, but essentially the circumstances as I understand it are that the council administration, which has at its heart the interests of the council, has been reviewing the charter of the Adelaide Central Market Authority, has proposed a series of measures uh, that document has been circulated to the board of the Adelaide Central Market Authority. It is uh, not to the satisfaction of the Central Market Authority, at least to their representative here in council. The dog ate its homework. Uh, it basically doesn't want to do, uh, it doesn't do what we wanted to do. Um, and please just approve this tonight. 
Um, what you do when you approve this is also set in place the principles that says clearly at three that change things forever. Essentially, that the RK will be integrated uh, to the Adelaide Central Market in order to create one market. That's the decision and taken away from Council. As just as sorry, Councillor Martin, but it actually says requests at the following principle. It doesn't say approve. Well, a principle is the principle is the guiding principle. Although I know guiding principles aren't always followed in this council, but the principle enshrines the measure in. Uh, the paperwork that's to come back to us. And that principle also says basically that the asset management plan upgrades expenditure will be determined by the market and presented to council staff and council for approval. Uh, that's It's coming to you to approve. Um, it says that the authority can devolve itself of the management of the car park, of U Park, which the council gave to the authority as a means of bolstering its revenue, which produces and I think it's confidential, but millions of dollars a year, it can say to the council, you manage it. Uh, we uh, want that there for our benefit. That's what this says. It says further that the nature and extent of the role of the traders in the, manage in the management of the authority of our authority will be determined by the traders. Now, well, let me read to you. The nature and extent of, role, of the role of traders and the management of the authority will be determined through consultation with the traders and the authority. Obviously, it determined by council now, and uh, Lord Mayor, I, I don't wish to be interrupted constantly. Um, this is what is being proposed. Uh, a good-natured attempt, no doubt, on the part of um, uh, Councillor Hyde, but it is nevertheless an intervention by the authority in the decision-making process of the council. Um, it bypasses the administration, which is trying to protect the future interests of the council, and you're being all sold this document as something you have to approve tonight. Now, if it's good enough for Theo Morris to tell um, uh, Councillor Mackey he's happy for us to have the discussion, may I have 30 seconds, Lord Mayor? Members? Yes. If it's good enough uh, for Theo Morris to assure Councillor Mackey he's happy to go uh, for this to go to a, uh, a workshop and for him to address us and to explain why it's necessary for these measures to be adopted and for that to be balanced with other advice, then that would seem to me to just be a prudent, simple mechanism to ensure that rather than making a decision on the fly, not being bogged down in analysis paralysis, but having all of the information to make a decision rather than something on the fly as the last item at a council meeting would seem to be so sensible as to be irresistible. Members? Councillor Knoll? Just looking at uh, uh, the, the point of the motion, if we look at the history, and I suppose that's the reason why I stayed here, is that I've lived through the whole process of getting you know, the authority. Excuse me, Lord Mayor, the Speaker declared a conflict of interest and said they would not take part in the debate. No, no, yes, I said I would take part in the discussion, but I will not, not in vote. The time. So, but the simple fact is that I, um, I am a recipient of uh, all of the actions from this council in previous intonations. The reason for the authority was to take away that political aspect and uh, that uh, uncertainty that was developed during, during all those uh, preceding years. And that's the reason why I came in and that's the reason why Stephen Yard would pressure that and I was uh, fortunate enough to be the president of the Trace Associated Association at the time. And this was an attempt to make this so that it would be managed more professionally, more specifically to the traders, so that it would be more engaged with them. I mean, the first, uh, 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 couple of, uh, first couple of years were difficult because the charter wasn't quite right. So it, it, uh, in the way it, was, it actually uh, was, uh, when in practice, uh, there were errors and difficulties in, in how it was to be administered and also in the management style. 
So they had another another go and then they changed it again so that it was, again, the traders were a bit more involved, hence the trader representative on the board. And that was for transparency because there were things that happened that the board and, and the traders didn't know about. And when it did come to light, there was a, you know, a lot of issues around that. So it was an attempt by this body to try and, and alleviate those little problems. Now, there are still issues with that charter, and I said it at the time, and they needed to be refined, and they, we were told it was going to be a, a yearly uh, review. Well, it's been a while. And now, this whole aspect, so we have a, a, a professional board that was selected by people from, from this chamber, and uh, they are managing this. They are people with government specialisations that have said there are issues here with, with uh, conflicts of interest and all sorts of things that need to be addressed. And they also want to ensure by the way they're doing this is that it's they're guiding um, our, our decision making with what they see as, as an authority to try to manage this very well uh, and, and put the right eggs in the right baskets. Now, we, it still belongs to us as the council, yet we, we, in a sense, we lend them money and the money goes towards infrastructure for a heritage building that needs to be kept up. And yet it, that money never gets uh, uh, removed, it doesn't get depreciated or anything simply because it doesn't have anywhere to go with the way it's set up. So it's, it's things like that, putting the, the responsibility with the people who are able to do that, deal with it and manage it effectively. The authorities idea there is simply they want you to be able to manage it, manage it, ensure that there is a cohesion between the, the new development and this one so that it does work together and it, to help inform how uh, you know councillors can see this rather than it just being us making decisions or not myself but you making decisions on their behalf if I can have just a few more moments. You know, and so if we think about that, uh, these are attempts by, by well-meaning people. All of you, are, you know, do have a, a desire for, for to, to manage this market well and look after it. We've given it to people to do that. They've come back with a few ideas and, and, and uh, ideas of how we are to help guide us so that we do this better. And it helps us to make a better decision because you don't want it to go out and then you highlight again deficiencies that we wouldn't have known as people not actively involved. And until you've actually been in that, in that market and, and how it functions, uh, you can't fully appreciate the sort of uh, oversights or the sort of communications that you need and enabling that to be a much more tighter, better governed uh, uh, relationship and, and enabling us to be the entity that, that looks after the, the infrastructure and they just look after the way it's managed and ensuring that the actual business of the market, which is delivering produce and, and that, is done. And that way it takes away all of that problem from them and uh, they're able to at least guide us uh, so that you know, the council makes better decisions. Members, if Councillor Hyde, is that a question? Uh, yeah, a question. Um, so uh, the acting CEO outlined that there was a draft chart, and yes, we've, we've touched upon that. So could governance, could we scroll down just to, to the motion a little bit? Uh, there's a list in there. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah good. Uh, could the administration confirm whether any sort of operating agreement has been presented to the authority? Um, I was unable to attend the board meeting, um, councillor, at the last one, so I'm not sure if that so has was, Well, has one, I'll rephrase it, has one uh, been drafted? I need to take that to, um, on notice, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and roles and responsibilities for the arcade and redevelopment, has that been drafted or has any work started on that? Through the presiding member, um, I, again, I'd need to take that on notice. Um, and the same for C, same the C. and the same for the CLMP. Okay, right. Okay, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. And if we can scroll to the, the uh, actual motion, thank you. That is what we're debating, that the matter be deferred pending a workshop, including presentation from the chair. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Before I sum up, I'd be interested to hear your um, views on this one. Do you have a, a view on the amendment? Um, look, my view is uh, very coloured by, the, I did have a catch up with Theo as well to make sure that um, A, he was comfortable uh, with the principles that he wanted us to discuss. Um, he was uh, a, a, across the fact that we would 
take this into a workshop and work through that. So we could also invite him to that workshop. I think that would be absolutely relevant. Um, and that some of this work had started and some of it hadn't. So, uh, but that was necessary, um, particularly with the uh, market square, the central market development going ahead, that this work is really imperative that we get onto it very quickly. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And look, um, I don't disagree with with um, what you've uh, said, um, nor what uh, Councillor um, Canol has said, and I appreciate his insights in terms of someone who um, has had an ongoing connection with the market over a long period of time. I guess my, my only concern with this process is this is a new, relatively new to, to me, um, having only been uh, brought to council via an elected um, member motion. Um, and whilst Councillor Hyatt says, you know, this is just something we're going to set in train, these are foundational documents and they are establishing clear principles. And I'd like to actually be able to interrogate those a little bit more before um, voting on them. In particular, I'd like the opportunity to hear from the chair directly, um, not just Councillor Hyde, and indeed through our standing orders there's no capacity for me as an elected member to be able to ask questions of Councillor Hyde if he is putting this motion forward as a formal representative of the authority. Um, then there is no mechanism for me to be able to interrogate him or for us to be able to work through those things in, in more detail. So my view is let's have a formal workshop so that we can exercise due diligence as elected members, talk through the, the guiding principles um, and so on get uh, the Chair Theo Maris to come to that meeting so that we can ask him a few questions and form a position on this. I don't think that's anything um, that radical or unreasonable and it may well be that unanimous agreement is reached once we've had an opportunity for those uh, questions to be asked and that discussion to um, ensue. But uh, I do feel that this is a little bit on the fly. Um, Councillor Hyde says this is really urgent. It's been knocking around for seven years. If it's been knocking around for seven years, it can wait for an extra month or so. Give us an opportunity to work through um, these issues. Um, so as I say, I don't think what I'm suggesting is, uh, is that radical. Um, and it is part of our role to um, exercise due diligence and to ask those sorts of questions. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Division. Please, I'll, I'll send this to all the traders. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment, please stand and remain standing till all noes have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, and Councillor Sims. Okay, members, that takes us back to the uh, original motion. Um, would anybody else like to speak to that before we sum up? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I think this is really uh, about the integrity of Councillor Hyde. I think that's what we're, it seems to be a bit like. Uh, I think that someone, I think, that, I think that's what you're saying here is that we want to check that Councillor Hyde, who's on the board, and we want to check with Theo and have a meeting and have a workshop so we can check that Councillor Hyde has got the integrity in regards to the, 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 uh, the, the board. Uh, is that what you're saying here? I don't know. But um, I'm really. Um, yeah, I think that's what you're saying. I think what you're saying. We don't trust Hyde. That's what you're saying. But like Deputy Lord no, Mayor, can you just talk to the motion, I'm please? I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, but we're having a workshop. We're having a workshop. Councillor Hyde is on the board. He speaks directly with the board. He's had these discussions. Theo Morris, who is the chair, who specifically said yes, he would be happy for it to go to a workshop because he knows that, that we are going to have one. We are not going to make a decision on these requests because um, they are requests. Um, they're not. They're not um, set in concrete. They're not decisions that are going to be made now. You're, he's requesting to have them put in the charter, pending the workshop that we are having on the 16th of February. Um, so I think that's all fair and reasonable. We have elected Hyde, uh, Councillor Hyde to be on this board. We have to trust um, our councillors that are on the board, and if we if don't trust them, that is. That's, that's something that you have to resolve within yourselves. Um, but I'm not going to be party for a workshop, a couple of a workshop, a couple of a workshop type stuff. We have got a workshop. We are being clear about that. 
and um, I think we just should just stick with the process. And if Councillor High believes um, with being on the board that this is something they want to put forward, that is um, uh, we can add to the charter. Great, excellent, happy to review them all together once at the workshop. Um, will um, uh, the chair be present at that workshop? I think we can invite the chair to be present. That would be good. Workshop. I think that'd be a great idea. Thank you. Uh, members, Councillor Stims, you've already spoken. I was going to speak on the substantive. You already have spoken on the oh, substantive. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Members, yeah. Councillor, no, you didn't, Councillor Martin. Look, I, I, I just want to say very briefly, this is not about the integrity of uh, Councillor Hyde. It has nothing to do with it. And, and it is a, a misguided interpretation to suggest that's the case. What it is, is about governance. It's about the stuff that you people and I have learned um, through attendance at things like um, uh, the company director's course. Um, I would have thought there was um, ample occasion for us to reach a conclusion on this in a considered way, not from the floor of council, not doing the administration in the eye as has happened tonight. Um, this is really unhealthy and it's just a further indication to me that there are a lot of people in here who don't understand their role. Members, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Of course, you, you see in the list, um, I included something in there regarding risks and matters of concern, which would actually, there is no mechanism in the current chart or anywhere in the documents that would allow the, the authority to officially report through to the council things that they were not happy with. And that's the thing, we put our subsidiaries, AIDA and, and ACMA, uh, in the hands of the administration, they are very capable, but at times you do get concerned that, um, uh, Council doesn't have specific oversight, and that's why we put people on them. Uh, and that person is telling you that these things uh, must be fixed. Now, of course, we'll fix them together. We'll all get in the workshop together and sit around and sing Kumbaya, um, uh, and we'll consult with the traders, and we'll consult with everyone else who needs to be consulted with, and we'll talk about what is our vision. That's something this council has not talked about yet. We've spoken about what we're going to build, talk, talk about yeah, trees and water and all the rest of it. We've dealt with that. Good on us. Great development as, as we see, you know, $64 million net, you know, to the bottom line. Um, great project. But how's it going to work? How's it going to work? Who's going to do the leasing? Who's going to organise it? Who's going to run it? Um, and that's where we're at the point where we need to, where we need to discuss and, of course, um, and only one of those documents, to the best of my knowledge, has been prepared. The rest of them need to be prepared and they should all be approved at the same time. To do them one after the other would be nonsensical um, and it actually exposes the council to drafting very poor foundational documents. Um, uh, this fixes that. It fixes a, num another, uh, a number of other areas. There may be other things that come up in the workshop that councillors want addressed and that's fantastic. Uh, there may be things that once we see them drafted and included in there, um, and after the consultation, we think so maybe a couple of these principles either need to be changed or got rid of entirely. We can do that. And, 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 and if it's the right thing to do, I hope this council will do that. Um, and, so, uh, but, and so what this does is it gets the ball rolling because as Councillor Sims said, and I would challenge him to go around the market and say, oh, wait another month. Um, I challenge him to go and do that, and see what the response is like, uh, because it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. It's been hanging around for seven years um, and it needs to be fixed. This will fix it. If you don't want to fix it, by all means, go vote against it. Vote against the arcade. You know, let the place languish. Uh, that's on your heads. They're ratepayers. They voted elections and you can answer to them. Uh, but I'm going to do the right thing by them right now. Members, we're going to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kara, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor. Okay. Members, that takes us to items 18 on tonight's agenda, which is motions without notice. If there are no motions without notice, we go to item number 19, which is to close the meeting. Thank you all for your attendance.
um, and we'll see you back here next week.